Hi, welcome back guys. This is your friend, the DN What If, with another fanfiction. This is the movie of what if a four-year-old Deku manifested his quirk while standing up to his friend. All credits for this video go to their respective authors. So please support the real author. Check out the link in the description for more details. Please give this video a like and subscribe to the channel if you want more videos like this. Now let's get into the fanfic. He'd always known that not everyone was born equal, he'd known it since he was four. That's mean Kaken. Izuku Midoriya known as the only boy in his class who hadn't manifested his quirk stood before his childhood friend Katsuki Kaken Bakugu and his two cronies. Behind him lying on the ground was their recent bully victim. Look, you made him cry. I I won't let you hurt him anymore. He knew it was stupid, hopeless even. At least the boy behind him had a means to protect himself, even though it proved fruitless but him. Katsuki laughed and punched his palm creating a miniature explosion you playing at Hero Deku. You don't even have a quirk. He had nothing and everyone made sure to remind him of it every day. His so-called friends whom he admired because they had what he hadn't. They had no qualms with beating him down despite his handicap. Today was no different he thought bracing himself for the inevitable. Extended fingers grabbed his head and his arms were grabbed. Katsuki reared his fist back you should really learn your place, Deku. In another time Katsuki's fist would have hit causing a bruise to form on Izuku's cheek. When asked about it by his mother he would have passed it off as an accident happening while he was playing with his friends. His mother would be none the wiser as to the further physical and psychological abuse her son would face in the oncoming years. However at this time, at this place something else happened. The moment Katsuki's fist impacted his cheek there was a blinding light that enveloped all five of them in the street itself. All three of the bullies were roughly tossed aside. Extended fingers slammed into a wall, dragon wings flew so far into the air he was lost in the skyline and Katsuki ended up overturning some trash can. The light subsided leaving a bewildered Izuku and bullet victim. Blinking a little Izuku staring at the receding light on his palms until he remembered the boy and turned around are you okay? The boy who was speechless could only nod, his tears temporarily gone. Ooh, two heads turned to see Katsuki pull himself up with a groan what the he stared at the boys then his fallen followers and put two and two together D.E.K.U. Said boy turn run I'll hold him O.O.O.F. before he could finish Katsuki tackled him to the ground. Izuku desperately tried to summon the power from before unfortunately nothing happened. Smack. For the next few months Izuku tried time and again to summon his unknown quirk with no progress. He didn't even know how he did it in the first place but what he did know was that it happened when Katsuki was bullying him. So it might appear in times of stress. His cronies had already spread the word about the power of Izuku's mysterious quirk but so far no one has seen it. Katsuki took this as a personal insult as he thought Deku thought they weren't good enough for him to show them his quirk and so went on a one-man crusade to get him to use it again. The bullying began to become more frequent and outright dangerous. For a time Katsuki was hell-bent but after several months of nothing everything went back to normal and Izuku's quirkless status was re-established with the passing of the singular event. No one cared anymore that technically Izuku had a quirk. As far as they were concerned, out of sight, out of mind. Unknown to everyone else Izuku never stopped trying to manifest it. He may not have been able to cause a light wave as he did the first time but he managed to take stock of things happening to his body. Things only he could have noticed. Things such as through his numerous beatings how his wounds practically healed overnight. How his stamina was a lot greater than before. And most importantly it was how he felt when he was outside. More specifically when he was exposed to the sun. It wasn't anything special at first but as Izuku began obsessing with his mysterious quirk. Both to show everyone he had one and to study it himself he took note of almost anything out of the norm. Needless to say he picked up on it rather quickly. After the incident he started waking up literally at the crack of dawn. When that ray of light would pass through the blinds to shine on his face. He never flinched away from the contact with the sun's rays, in fact he embraced it. He always felt gloomy on a cloudy day and he would smile more, particularly in the summer. At one point he even did an experiment using a bruise he got from Katsuki the day prior. He exposed it to the sun and after a few minutes he watched as it clear it leaving radiant skin. After compiling his evidence he came to the assurance that he did indeed have a quirk but the thing that irked him was not knowing what that quirk was. All he knew was that it had something to do with the sun and light. How was he supposed to be a hero when he didn't even know what his quirk was? So after pleading with his mother she opted to take a little time off and take him to specialist. Izuku stared down at the grinning action figure of his idol All Might. His mother sat beside him patiently waiting for the doctor to arrive with the results. Quirk tests were conducted for nearly every new and or mysterious quirk manifested in a child. It did well not only for the parents to know but the government likes to categorize all types of quirks. He finally looked up when the doctor came in with a few documents. His mother also looked to him expectantly. As for the doctor he looked equal parts excited and thoughtful. While little Izuku's quirk is certainly a rare one. He began. What is it? Izuku shouted. The suspense was killing him. 
His mother was more genial though she too would like to know is there a reason why he can't manifest it at will. I know it should be difficult at his age but all the other students can at least do something. Ah but that is the thing he said a matter of factly his quirk has been active all along. Even now, at this very moment his quirk active. That caused the mother and son to blink what exactly is his quirk. At this the doctor smiled solar radiation absorption. Izuku tilted his head huh? What's that? Basically Izuku you are a solar battery. Your body absorbs solar energy, a eh, that is, energy from the sun, and uses that energy as a buffer for your bodily functions. You said that when it manifested there was an explosion of light correct? Izuku nodded yeah. There was like a really bright light and Kakan was flying. The doctor nodded I see. Well that should explain why you haven't been able to manifest it like you did before and for just how long has his quirk has manifested. And Ko looked at the man in confusion what do you mean? I mean, that explosion of light is the result of months, possibly years of solar-powered absorption being released. He took out an X-ray chart of his diaphragm. As far as I can tell the quirk is mostly passive. You'd never notice he'd even had it unless in extreme instances such being wounded. Izuku began nodded frantically. Yeah, yeah. Well I guess that makes sense. Izuku has been healing faster than normal from his accidents. A frown came across her face at his, at one point, frequent accidents. It is also possible for him to have endless stamina when exposed to the sun the doctor mused while stroking his chin. Can I be a hero? He jumped right to the matter. The doctor looked pensive I honestly don't know he shrugged. Izuku's smile froze huh? This is the interesting part of to be honest even I am not certain if this will be the full extent of your quirk. Whether it will evolve with time or will stay as is he shook his head it could go either way. Please visit again if any new developments occur. I've never actually seen a quirk like this before. And Ko bowed lightly thank you doctor. After they left Izuku was oddly silent, contemplating what the doctor told him. The truth is he didn't really care what his quirk was. Heck he could be quirkless and that wouldn't stop him from pursuing his dream. The problem was that to be like All Might he needed to be strong and right now he was anything but. Kakan is going to be a hero. I need to do my best. And Ko felt Izuku squeeze her hand and almost did a double take at the fiery determination on her son's usually cheerful face. It almost brought her to tears how much in that instance he's grown. The next two years were filled with mostly experimentation and research along with everyday things for Izuku. When he was allowed to. Along with watching videos of his idol he started searching for any other heroes with a similar quirk to his own. He didn't make much progress on the latter front unfortunately. As for the former, Izuku started to carry around a notepad to further record anything of value though due to his age and limited vocabulary, it wasn't much but that would change in time. After two years he could at least force his palms to glow for a few seconds though. It never occurred to Izuku to try out the light wave since he had no idea how that happened in the first place. As a consequence of his research he started paying less attention to Katsuki. Since he had his own quirk problems to deal with he couldn't be bothered to follow him around anymore. Also due to his uphill struggle with his own quirk Izuku felt a little vindictive jealousy towards the boy and classmates who had it better due to how easily their quirks came to them. He respected his friend whom also shared his love for All Might and while Izuku wanted to become like his idol, he admired his friend for wanting to surpass the legendary hero. He did not, however, admire Kakin for his attitude and his almost constant use of his literally explosive quirk against him. In the end Izuku distanced himself from him while trying to maintain what's left of their friendship, though for reasons sometimes unknown to him. There was always that bitter resentment towards his friend for treating him so badly, for having people praising him just for what he could do naturally, for people overlooking his rotten attitude in favor of his quirk. That was also the reason why he wanted to distance himself from Katsuki. Izuku had never hated anyone before and he'd prefer not to do it now but he was close. It was something he didn't understand. He never thought he could dislike someone especially his friend but he was getting close. And Katsuki was doing nothing to make it easier. All of Izuku's work to distance himself was met with a physical altercation or mocking words and every time Izuku's dislike grew more. By the time they were nine Izuku had acknowledged the fact that they couldn't, wouldn't be friends. He recognized that Kakin's arrogant nature along with his superiority complex would never allow Katsuki to truly be his friend. To most Katsuki had seemingly given up trying to solve the mystery of Deku, they were wrong. He still kept an eye on him to try and figure out what his quirk was. That incident happened years ago and was surely forgotten by the other two but it was always at the back of Katsuki's mind, raising questions throughout the years. What was his quirk? Why didn't he tell anyone? Why doesn't he show it? What is he hiding? Does he think he's better than me? Whenever someone gets a quirk it's usually all they could talk about. 
So far he knew everyone's quirk, except for Deku who goes by the title of Quirkless. Katsuki knew the truth though. He wasn't dumb enough to think that Deku's sudden change of demeanor back then didn't have something to do with it. Hell he even knew what his quirk was after asking his mom but seeing is believing and he wouldn't be satisfied until he actually saw Deku's quirk. So far the only other hero he had to compare with Deku's supposed quirk was an American hero who could absorb sunlight and even fire beams of radiation from his hands. If Deku's quirk was like that then he'd definitely have to know where he stood with him. His pride refused to allow Deku of all people to be better than him and if that idiot wouldn't willingly show them his quirk then he'll force him to. Surprisingly it was easier said than done as Deku took his bullying like a champ. The injuries seemed to roll over him and he would be fine the next day. Katsuki never injured to last as he's almost certain Deku was covering for him but if his mom started asking questions then fingers would get pointed and the last thing he wanted was to screw up his relationship with her. He didn't like Deku but Inko was like a second mother to him, sometimes even more so than his own. He's been trying for years now and all he got was to further alienating his friend not that he missed his friendship but eventually he started seeing less and less of the boy he grew up with. Not to say he wasn't the same. He was still bright-eyed when talking about heroes, still mumbled to himself when he thinks too hard and he kept his nose in a notebook for half the time he was seen. It was always the same book too which made Katsuki curious. So curious in fact that he didn't even notice one of his followers calling out to him. Yo Earth to Katsuki. When the boy didn't even acknowledge his presence he followed his gaze to see Deku scribbling down in that notebook. It's been a while since they ever talked to him. Katsuki left him alone for a few days now and despite the guy glaring holes at him, Deku was so preoccupied with whatever he was doing he didn't even flinch. Now the guy was curious about what he was doing. He looked at Katsuki still glaring at him and his lips curved in a sly smile. It's not like Katsuki has a monopoly on the guy. So without any preamble he went over to Deku and swiped his book mid-writing watch a guy here Deku. Izuku shot up give it back. Startled at the steel in eyes the boy relaxed once he saw the subtle shaking on the smaller boy's form oh yeah and what are you gonna do Deku. At the last word one of his fingers extended like a spring and poked him in the forehead so hard his head jerked back. At that instant something happened. Something unexpected. Something unseen to the boy in front but visible to Katsuki. Though even he wasn't sure what was happening. Izuku slowly set his head down. A foreign pressure permeated the room, Katsuki's eyebrows shot up and the boy trembled despite himself. When Izuku spoke a chill crept up their spin its mind, give it back. The boy froze wide-eyed. Izuku had his back to Katsuki so the latter couldn't see exactly what the boy saw when he looked him in the eye but it was enough for the boy to freeze. At this point any chatter going on was stopped as everyone's attention turned to the seemingly overwhelming alien presence. Before anyone could do something though, the teacher walked in creating a distraction. During that split-second distraction Izuku grabbed his book and sat down, deftly ignoring everyone's stares and whispers. What just happened? Scary. Did you see his eyes? I think Ryugi almost wet himself. Think that was a quirk. Couldn't be. He's Deku. He doesn't have a quirk. Then what was that? That last question was what Katsuki was wondering too. He never got a chance to confront him about it since he bolted from the room the moment the bell rang. Not even listening to the teacher who was giving his last remarks for the day. Izuku hurried past his mother, muttering some greetings as he went and locked himself in his room. What was that? At that moment Izuku didn't feel completely in control of himself. It was like he was a spectator to his own action. He could see himself, how cold and malicious he was towards the other boy and more importantly how hollow he felt. Is this part of my quirk? No, that doesn't make any sense. How would whatever that was have anything to do with absorbing solar energy? As he asked this there was a knock on the door causing him to jolt but calmed down when his mother's concerned voice called out Izuku are you alright? Dot 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 yes mom. The doorknob jiggled did something happen at school. And no I just wanted to practice with my quirk. Oh oh, well dinner will be ready in an hour. Okay, I love you mom he added for good measure. I love you too Izuku. He heard her footsteps receding and felt horrible. He didn't like lying to her but knowing his mother she would blow everything out of proportion. Before that happens he'd at least like to see if he could maybe figure out what was going on. Izuku didn't like to brag but he was smarter than most people his age, especially when it comes to analyzing things. He figured whatever happened to him in class had to do with his quirk. The problem was that he had no idea how that happened which frustrated him. It was just like that incident five years ago with the light bomb. It was spontaneous and happened when he was feeling dot 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 well if Izuku was being honest he felt very angry. Izuku spent the rest of the evening trying to figure out what happened but again his endeavors weren't rewarded. He kept thinking back to that moment when the boy called him useless Deku and poked him with his quirk. It was as if something snapped in him. That had to be it and as much as he wanted to find a way to try and control he was naturally reluctant to do it. In the end he chose to forget about it for now. The final days of elementary following that incident saw the weather reported overcast skies and Katsuki's attention on Izuku again. 
It wasn't anything particularly new to anyone else but for Katsuki and Izuku they could tell something was different. Izuku was becoming clearly aggravated with his bullying, something that was new to them and while Izuku was trying to prevent things from escalating Katsuki took it as a sign of him finally breaking Izuku. Not that it was easy and for the next few months he pressed on with Izuku showing more and more signs of uncharacteristic resentment. Most notable was his dark glares replacing his fearful stares. Instead shaking from fear, he shook from very controlled anger and on more than one instance he looked ready to attack Katsuki. Yet he would always rein himself in at the last minute and walk away anticlimactically. There was no doubt on anyone's mind that Izuku was like a time bomb and even with his status as useless Deku there was an undercurrent of fear towards the boy when tensions became high. By the end of elementary school Katsuki was the only one who bothered to bully him and he was only made fun of in large groups. He never paid them any mind though. He'd gotten good at ignoring his peers unless it was necessary. Soon enough Izuku became the class outcast. At least more than he was anyway. The only difference being that he was more reclusive, kept himself at the back of class on the farthest side from the window. Everyone including the teachers were a little perturbed by his behavior if only because of the novelty of it and it only increased their worries because they couldn't pinpoint the cause. It's as if one day he was normal the next he wasn't. Not even his mother could say the change was very spontaneous and worry. That didn't sit right with Katsuki who overheard her conversation with his mother. I don't know what to do and Ko half sobbed he doesn't talk to me anymore. I don't see him so much as smile and he spends most of his time in his room. Mitsuki Bakugu was at a loss as to what to do want me to talk to him. No, Katsuki didn't hate his mother but her brand of parenting left much to be desired and she isn't completely oblivious to how he acts I'm just being a worry wart. It really isn't as bad she sobered a little I I think it may have something to do with his quirk. Mitsuki raised an eyebrow how so? I thought he could only absorb sunlight or something. In Kosai I know but I think there's more to it than that. I just know it. It ticked him off just knowing that idiot was causing trouble for Inko so it would do some good to knock some sense into him. Literally. Izuku was having an off day. Then again all his days were off and he'd long suspected why. He looked up to the sky which reflected how he felt. He knew he'd sort of relied on sunlight for years now but he'd never thought its absence would affect him this much. No even in the past on cloudy days like this he'd never felt so. Lousy. There was something going on with his quirk but why would it start now of all times? It must have really showed considering even his teachers were worrying about him. They never cared about me before. He had to shake those pessimistic thoughts from his head. He'd been having them a lot lately and it's the other reason why he acknowledged that he was acting weird. Just as he was pondering his situation, mumbling under his breath as he did so he was pulled aside, literally, and slammed into the wall. Oi Deku. No. Kei Kaken. No, no, no. What the hell are you doing? Izuku really didn't want to deal with this today. Not now, not ever. WH what D do you mean? He answered distractedly while trying to find an escape route I have to get home. That plan ultimately failed when the ten-year-old grabbed him by the collar you're not going anywhere Deku. Izuku trembled dot 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 do dot dot lol dot dot ha dot dot dot. What? The trembling increased and he lowered his head I said don't call me that. My name's Izuku not Deku. There was a beat as Katsuki looked at the boy trembling like a leaf. Who couldn't even make eye contact and laughed in his face. Izuku still with his head down tried to move past him. Not that he went far as Katsuki shoved him back onto the wall. Let's get something straight here he raised his palm creating miniature explosions I'm the one with the quirk here and you're the useless Deku. At that moment the small light show afforded by his quirk made an almost artistic contrast against Izuku's face when he gritted his teeth and glared at him. However instead of terrified, soft or even hardened green eyes Katsuki was greeted with cold, hollow and pitch black eyes that seemed to swallow the light shone on them. Katsuki actually recoiled slightly at the sight of such intense empty eyes but that was all the smaller boy needed. He pushed him off and did something that shocked them both. He punched Katsuki across the face, reeling more from the shock than the impact Katsuki fell on his rear, clutching his teeth. Admittedly it was the first time Izuku had ever thrown a punch and so he miscalculated and cut his knuckles on Katsuki's teeth. He cradled his hand with a brief look of pain crossed his features. He managed to force down the tears to glare hard at the still shell-shocked boy. My name is Midoriya Izuku. Not Deku with that proclamation he briskly walked away. Katsuki stared at his retreating back. The action slowly registering and as it did a snarl came across his features. Izuku's heart raised I I did it. I stood up to Kaken. His silent victory was short-lived however when an explosion directly behind his back pushed him face first into the ground. He didn't know which one hurt more. He turned around to see an irate Katsuki stalking towards him with continuous explosions going off in his palms. You bastard he sneered you think I'm gonna just let you get away with that. Instead of answering Izuku palmed a clump of dirt and threw it in Katsuki's eyes. G-A-H. D-A-K-U. He wiped it away and slightly reddened eyes glared at Izuku's sprinting form you're dead. He ran after the boy tossing explosions every chance he got. 
Izuku ran to the back of the school and into the school supply shed which was thankfully open. Katsuki ran in a few moments after and looked around. The relatively small storage area made smaller due to the sporting equipment stored inside. Show yourself D.E.K.U. Get out here so I can kill you. In response the door behind him slammed shut causing Katsuki to spin around thinking he was locked in. To his credit Katsuki was only half right. He was locked in but standing before the locked door was a panting Izuku, his eyes still a perfect color of pitch. Katsuki's hands lit up again but before he could get a word in Izuku went over to the conveniently placed light switch. Lights out. Click. No one could say for sure what happened inside the storage shed. The door was blown off its hinges. The equipments had seen better days. Either completely obliterated or mangled and battle scars littered the area, a clear sign of a destructive quirk or quirks. As for the boys, they were both found by the groundskeeper passed out from exhaustion and covered in wounds. It wasn't anything new to find children injured due to misuse of quirks, though it is up to the parents and teachers to warn them against such misuse. What made this different was the extent to which they were injured. Izuku was covered in burn marks, some doing irreparable damage to his skin, his clothes was burned and he was covered in soot. As for Bakugu his body was covered in cuts and bruises some of them leaving permanent scars on his body. Neither of them were very forthcoming about what exactly happened between them but one thing that was clear was that they had an intense dislike for each other. The fallout of the fight resulted in a rift between their families and just like the scarring wounds on the boys' bodies the relationship between their families was irreparable. And Ko being the woman she was decided not to fight Mitsuki on it and instead moved on, both figuratively and literally. And so the fragile friendship between Izuku Midoriya and Katsuki Bakugu ended. A few days later Izuku was sitting in his new room with bandages over his arm, leg and chest. Despite this, he had a smile on his face. He had stood up to Kaken, something of a lifelong goal for him and while he didn't win, he knew that Katsuki will always remember and he will never underestimate him. Barring that there was also another development. Sitting cross-legged on the ground his palm shone with self-composed light a moment later the light was snuffed out and nothing else happened. Looking up, his smile widened when he gazed upon his shadow writhing across the wall seemingly of its own accord. Awesome. Once again Izuku found himself sitting on a swivel chair in the doctor's office. The same doctor who diagnosed and identified his quirk before. The only difference was that the mood was a stark contrast from before. Even with his healing factor Izuku still had bandages around his arm and part of his face. Inko was a picture of worry herself. She was still reeling from the news, not just of Izuku's fight but the relationship between him and Katsuki. Guilt couldn't begin to describe how she felt to know that she had been ignorant of the fact that her best friend's son was bullying her own, even going so far as to use his quirk against him. It's a wonder why he changed so much. At the very least Mitsuki apologized for Katsuki's behavior and while they agreed to keep them separated and Ko found it hard to ever trust her friend again. As for Izuku, he had clammed up, he hadn't really talked much since then. Remorse was clearly evident on his part and she'd even heard him crying sometimes at night. Like Katsuki he didn't speak about what happened. He did however ask her if they could visit the doctor to see about his quirk again, she complied and here they are. A solemn Izuku looked to the doctor can you turn off the lights please? That question caught both adults off guard though the doctor did comply but left a lamp on to see. In the small room surrounded by darkness with only the lamp as the only source of light Izuku held out his palm. Inko almost gasped when an Inkai black substance swirled into existence until it was the size of a baseball. The doctor fixed his glasses and leaned closer to observe the mass extraordinary. Tell me Izuku, since when have you been able to do this? Izuku lowered his arm a few days ago but he paused he'd had a lot of time to think about it. In fact he catalogued it in his notebook but I think it started two months ago. Inko recognized it as the time when the gloom started to creep on his face. It is rare to find someone with a photokinetic quirk he paused seeing their confused face as a quirk whose ability is to emit and or manipulate photons or light energy if you will. It is even rarer to find its inverse umperkinesis, the ability to generate and manipulate darkness. But to combine them together he trailed before getting up to turn on the light. I can't manipulate light Izuku said but was intrigued. Yet the doctor interjected you cannot manipulate light yet Izuku. Your quirk is still in its development stage but if what you have just shown me is any indication then you are not that far off from discovering that ability. What does this all mean? Inko said wordly will Izuku be alright? I will not lie to you Mrs. Midoriya. By themselves those quirks have the potential to be truly powerful and dangerous quirks. In that instant they truly seemed like mother and son as the worry spike reflected on both their faces. Will Izuku be alright? She pressed. The doctor raised his hands to placate the mother and son what is the extent of your control over it? Can you materialize it in sunlight? He shook his head a little but it's better in the dark. He nodded at the rate of growth. He wouldn't be as powerful as someone with only one of the powers so the backlash wouldn't be as great. That was a small relief for the mother though it still doesn't answer my question. 
Your son should be alright. I believe his current disposition is because of the emergence of his secondary quirk. In some cases a person's quirk affects their demeanor. Izuku is just one of many cases. Izuku nodded along. Understanding the doctor's words as the most immediate example he had was Katsuki, an explosive quirk for an equally explosive attitude. At least he confirmed the source of his strange behavior much to his mother's relief. Does it solve the problem? Not really, but knowing is half the battle. The reason for Izuku's sudden change is due to his accessing of the darker aspects of his quirk, in order to help change his demeanor again. All he has to do is use his light powers. So I suggest prolonged exposure to the sun. He makes it sound so easy Izuku thought but nonetheless not it. Izuku moved into the next town over, far away from where he lived and relatively close to a middle school. Izuku couldn't say he missed his old home. There was nothing there but torment, pent-up aggression and helplessness, and Izuku vowed he would never end up the same way again. So with his move Izuku would start over from scratch. From this point on he wouldn't be the useless Deku but rather Midoriya Izuku. He will have the normal school life he deserved and real friends. No bullying, no name calling, he would leave all of that behind. He added that to his ever-growing bucket list, right next to training his quirk. Speaking of which Izuku was going to be on top of that throughout the rest of his middle school year. He has his eyes set on Yui Academy. No doubt Kakin would be aiming for the same, after all if there was one thing they had in common it was their love for All Might. He'd always said that but Izuku hadn't really looked up the school requirements, too preoccupied with his previously unknown quirk in Kakin. Now that he had some semblance of control and access to the internet Izuku could thoroughly research. What he found shocked him a little. The things professional heroes say about that place were many but what stood out was how high their standards were. Yui only accepted the best and apparently their acceptance test is grueling. In an interview even All Might said that it was no different for him and he still has the memories of almost not making the cut. Izuku couldn't imagine it. The number one hero had a hard time through Yui. Izuku couldn't believe it and even now he couldn't help but doubt it. But he's willing to take his word for it. All Might wasn't one to lie. After further research on quirk development Izuku found another tidbit of information in that for some, the power of their quirk is dependent on the user's health. Again another example has got to be All Might. There is no way he could have a figure like that due to his quirk, unless it's muscle augmentation but Izuku just didn't see that from the number of videos he's seen of him. With that information he managed to categorize quirk growth in two categories, physical and mental growth. His umbrakineses would definitely fall in the latter category. It's the only explanation he has to how he could make so much progress with darkness manipulation despite showing photokineses first. I was spending so much time trying to get my quirk to work I didn't even bother trying to find out the proper conditions under how it would work he grumbled in deep thought. All those late nights researching, exhausting himself and eating junk food had only succeeded in stifling his photokinetic quirk. It's like expecting a flower to grow in a toxic wasteland. Well not a toxic wasteland but you know what he means. A very huge blunder on his part which cost him precious time but something he could hopefully remedy in the years to come with a carefully constructed training regimen. A challenge it would be no doubt. Izuku is woefully aware of the how unfit he currently is. He couldn't even run a short distance let alone pull through a full workout but he will persevere because nothing comes without a cost. Hopefully with the sun out he'll be able to recover faster thus train for longer in one sitting. As a precursor he started by working on his stamina which would also serve the purpose of familiarizing himself with his new neighborhood. He made sure to wear a tank top and sweat shorts to ensure his skin is exposed to as much sunlight as possible. As expected he started running on fumes less than 10 minutes in his jogging. At least he got an answer as to how efficient his body was at absorbing and converting solar energy into what his body needed. If he could barely last 10 minutes on a jog that could only mean one of two things. Either his quirk isn't as strong as he thought or he's just that unfit and his quirk is compensating for it. He really couldn't tell which part sucks because who's to say where his energy ended and the solar-powered energy started during that relatively short jog. Not one to give up Izuku continued his regime to the best of his ability. Every day he would start the day with a well-balanced breakfast consisting of the five major food groups before running until his legs collapsed, sunbathe, do push-ups until his arms gave out, attempt to get a tan, do sits-ups until his sides cramped up beyond all reason, soak up some rays, do squats until his legs burn and finish off with a light jog back to his home where he would promptly collapse in his bed until his mother woke him up for an equally balanced dinner. Afterwards he would try not to drown himself in the shower, sleep with the blinds open, wake up at the crack of dawn, rinse and repeat. The training was tortuous, unusually cruel by his standards, and didn't show any immediate results where his photon quirk was concerned but what he did succeed in getting was the recognition from some of his neighbors. Apparently there was something earnest and inspiring about a young man actually training to become a hero instead of flaunting his power. Izuku was especially popular with the older generation for this, though it could also be because of his naturally cheerful attitude and willingness to help them with anything they had trouble with. 
A couple of odd jobs here and there manual labor was also part of his training plus doing a few favors in return for some treats is a win-win situation for him. Eventually it was time for the start of middle school which made Izuku put his training on pause temporarily. It wouldn't do any good to be a half-dead wreck in the middle of class, no need to make a bad first impression. They say that one person could have only so much luck at a given time and then there's Murphy's Law which Izuku didn't even think about. All he knew was that when he walked through the gates of his new school he found himself feeling a sense of freedom. This was supposed to be a fresh start. It's the reason why he was all smiles when he found his homeroom. Isn't that Deku? Then the smile was wiped from his face and ever so slowly he turned to see who had uttered that name. His stomach dropped when he saw them. He didn't know their names and their faces were vaguely familiar, but the fact that they know that name was cause enough for Izuku to lose any hope he had. He found the farthest corner away from them and waited for class to begin. Izuku's fight with Katsuki made headways and with almost every school the rumors started spreading and as it is with school spread rumors, as it gets passed around the truth becomes more and more obscured to the point where nothing is as it seems. Judging by how they were looking at Izuku whatever they heard wasn't good for him at all. He would find out later on that the fight wasn't a fight at all and went more along the lines of Katsuki having one of his epic tantrums and going overboard with his beatings on Deku. By the end of the day everyone would know that Izuku was quirkless and pretty much a useless wimp who got beat up so bad he had to move out of his neighborhood. And what does Izuku have to say to this? Sigh whatever. At this point Izuku could literally care less about what people like them thought of him. Sure he could disprove everything by showing his quirk. That would guarantee a rise in his status because it is unique and powerful but really if that is the cost of being acknowledged in this class then Izuku would rather be an outcast. The last thing he would want is a bunch of flunkies hanging off of him like what Katsuki had. No he'd keep his quirk to himself, let them think whatever they want of him. At least no one tried to confront him about it. For one though he didn't talk to the class much as Izuku didn't show the weakness he had in elementary that was a magnet for bullies. He felt they could sense the don't mess with me aura he tries to exude. He may have used a little of his darkness aura to fuel the sense of dread for anyone who was trying to pick up where Katsuki left off. It didn't earn him any friends but neither did it get him any kind of trouble which left him free to go through the motions of school so he could get back to training his quirk. The training eventually showed some results in his physical performance. His stamina was better, his diet contributed to a slight increase in muscle mass though it wasn't much it was progress. As for his quirk, after a semester of rigorous training Izuku was eventually able to summon an orb of light to his palms dot 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 and that was pretty much it. It was a start and he'd spent a week studying it and what he could do with it. The first instinct one would have with a ball of light in his hand was to throw it. But it was stuck pretty tied to his hand and he wasn't sure if it would maintain its form away from the power source or do what most would think and explode. There was no way he was going to take any chances with that which means he needed a proper testing ground. Looking for a place to train your quirk eh? Izuku nodded to the older man as he paid for water. Izuku had pinned the kindly man's store down as a sort of halfway mark between runs. He'd always buy something to drink and before he knew it became one of the man's regular customers. Yeah, I need somewhere to practice my quirk so I don't destroy anything. The man nodded in approval before stroking his beard well if it's space you're looking for I know of a place though I'm not sure it would be to your liking but could get you some privacy. As long as you don't mind the mess. Izuku smiled I don't think I would. Alright then. What the man gave him was directions to a condemned beach. So that's what he meant by mess Izuku muttered as he found himself at what used to be a seaside park. There were junk piled higher than he was tall. He could also see some bobbing on the ocean currents and honestly he could only imagine how a once popular local destination like this ended up amounting to little more than a junkyard. That was at the back of his mind as for what he thought of it now. It's perfect. Not only was it not too far from home but it afforded him privacy and target practice for his quirk. Okay so he has some expectations for what his quirk would be but what else would it do? A little unsure of himself Izuku decided to start with some calisthenics. Experience has told him to always limber up before doing any strenuous exercises and he was that unsure of himself to do it. Taking a deep breath he steeled his resolve and summoned the orb of light to his hand. He squeezed it a little. It was solid in his hand and felt warm like a miniature fire. It was something he was used to by now. Standing before a pile of trash he positioned himself. Notebook and pen lying a few parts away next to his backpack. Here goes he tossed the glowing orb towards the trash pile and watched with rapt attention as it shrunk midair fizzled into a barely seen spark as it hit the trash pile. Dot 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 ho. Getting his notebook Izuku began scribbling down while mumbling as expected it wasn't able to maintain its form without a steady supply of power. Hum maybe if I put more into it before release there would be a better result. He put the book down and created another orb which shone brighter with more power he willed into it okay. Test number two he muttered and lobbed the orb. This time the orb remained stable and made contact with the trash. 
There was an explosion of light that when subsided revealed a jagged hole in the sand along with burned traces of trash. Wo he continued to stare until he broke out into a huge smile yes. After a short victory dance he scribbled down in his notebook again. Possible ways to utilize the attack, a name and so forth. The testing was a success. Not only could he manifest light, he could attack with it. Izuku would admit he got the idea from Kaken. That guy's been tossing his quirk around so much that it was unavoidable to copy him. For a moment he entertained the thought of tossing a grenade of light at him just to see how he liked it. Come like grenade he wrote it down as a possible name. Then a thought occurred. Was an attack like that safe to use against people? He would more than likely use it against villains but villains were people too and the last thing he wanted was to maim someone. Taking a look at the hole he pursed his lips and made another orb exactly as the first one except he lowered the power output by half and tossed it into another pile of junk. There was a bright shine but more of a pop than an explosion that had Izuku squint his eyes but by the time it was over the trash pile was merely singed and a bit displaced. While that didn't work he wrote it down aside from a flashy light show there wasn't much damage. He took a deep breath and tried again this time lowering it by roughly a quart then tossed it. There was a bright shine followed by an explosion however the hole left by was less deep and the trash wasn't completely incinerated. Another success and Izuku made sure to note the power of each grenade. Delay time and result. He wiped the sweat from his brow and looked at it. If that didn't prove how taxing the power could be then he didn't know what did. As nightfall came Izuku switched it up and just as it was every time he did, the warm feeling he had turned cold, not chillingly more like the cold of night air creeping on his bare chest. It wasn't uncomfortable just noticeable and Izuku had long accepted this. After all it was his quirk a part of him. A lot of people would note the duality of his power. But really it was still Izuku. Sure when he activated his darkness cloak everything about him would become just a bit more gloomier. But it was still him, it's not like he'd turn evil just because he could manipulate darkness dot 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 at least he hoped not. He shook his head focus. The reason why he did this was to start the second part of his quirk training but Izuku had the advantage of practice. Since his darkness manipulation had nothing to do with his physical performance Izuku had been able to train with it in his room for months now. However this would be the first time he had to use it in a wide area. He checked the time looked out to the sea alright. Just like with his light he formed a black orb and stretched it out to wrap around a random piece of trash and yank it with all his strength. With his other hand he made another black orb launched at the oncoming object and smashed it away. Next he clenched his fist and the black orbs extended to make a crude and cartoonish giant hammer and turning towards a fridge he started battering it down. Within minutes the rusted refrigerator was dented and deformed. Aside from the slight strain of moving his arms Izuku was not the worse for wear. Just as I thought, it is easier. Izuku was a thinker by heart. For what he lacked in physical prowess he more than made up for it in his mental aptitude. Problem solving. Critical thinking it all came easy for him, it's the reason why he's top of his class. For a quirk whose strength owes a big part to his mental fortitude, it was only natural that he was better at it than with its light counterpart. He could have manifested it in the day if he wanted to but it wasn't as strong as it was at night. Not to mention he needed to make a comparison between them and just as he'd use the light side to the best of his abilities he needed to use the dark to that effect as well. This continued for the rest of the first semester and all the way through the second semester and before he knew it the first year was over. School went by in a relative blur for Izuku. He continued with his training, practiced with his quirks and study. In a way it's a good and bad thing. On one hand he was able to maintain his spot in the top 10 of his class. On the other hand he wasn't winning any favors with his more vindictive classmates. Not that he really cared. The days of curving his studies to suit the egos of others was over. At the end of the year Izuku scored within the top 20 in his year. A sizable amount of the junk at the seaside park was incinerated and any junk within 15 meters of the shoreline was pulled from the sea. All in all Izuku had a very productive first year of middle school. People become heroes for a lot of reasons in this day and age. Some do it because of purely altruistic reason. Others for the accolades or to accomplish a sense of achievement and even though he absolutely hated it Izuku acknowledged that there are those who do it for the money and fame. Constantly searching for heroes on the internet he's seen his fair share of scandals involving heroes. Izuku of course fell into the former category. He never saw being a hero as a job or wanted any great achievement other than saving lives and putting the villains behind bars. Of course it all stemmed from watching All Might all these years. The man was more than just Izuku's idol. He was Izuku's example of how a hero should be and while Izuku wouldn't think he could ever be as buff as All Might or smile as bright, he would do all he could to follow in the man's footsteps. That is why it is understandable that while he was jogging back home at night as a cool down from another workout session and came upon a particular scene, he would take a particular course of action. You bitch. There was the sound of something hitting flesh and a body flew from the corner and crashed into the wall and slumped to the ground. Ugh. Izuku's eyes widened when he saw a girl only a few years older than him, wearing a school uniform slam into the wall before him. 
Before he could get a good look at her, someone else stomped into view. He was a teenaged Yakuza type with a nasty quirk to match. Sharp needle-like quills jutted all over his body. They went through his tank top and jeans leaving them full of pin-sized holes on his body. The man didn't seem to notice Izuku who was still frozen in shock as he addressed the girl you think you could get the drop on me huh? He fired off some quills from his wrist at the girl causing her to yelp. That was the last draw for Izuku. I'm gonna kill yo ha. Huh? Before he could finish his sentence a glowing yellow orb dropped at his feet what in the hell? Boom. The concussive blast sent the man flying a few feet away where he landed painfully on his back. Izuku took that chance to run into the fray a shadow tendril wrapped around the recovering thug's leg and Izuku tossed him to the side of a wall. When the thug didn't get up Izuku went to check on the girl who could only stare at him with an expression foreign to him. Are you okay? Her eyes trailed down and Izuku followed before cringing and mentally chiding himself for the dumb question. Two long quills were embedded in her body, one in her shoulder and another in her forearm which she slowly pulled out with a grunt. Izuku felt sick seeing the blood flowing from the wounds and fumbled for his phone. He needed to call the police but first he'll call an ambulance to get her taken care of. Before he could even get the third number dialed a scream tore through his mouth and caused him to drop the phone. Izuku staggered at the white hot pain that erupted in his back. He cried again when another kind of pain laced at his shoulder and finally another at his leg which caused him to finally drop to his knees. Shakily he looked behind him to see the red-faced teenager's outstretched hand. He had a bruise on his face. You piece of shit. It almost made Izuku lock up in terror, but a glance at the girl caused him to keep it at bay and stagger to his feet. That's when a kick to his side knocked the air out of him. He ended up landing on his back but rolled over to his side and clutched his stomach in a fetal position. He yelped when the teen stomped painfully on his side. Who the hell are you? Izuku coughed for a response and tried to shift his body to protect his head. You with that bitch huh? Izuku was lifted up to come face to face with his attacker you her boyfriend or something. Come to help her take me out. Izuku had no idea what he was talking about and he didn't care as small quills poked out his face and he delivered a brutally painful headbutt. Izuku's entire mind exploded in pain and in reflex he formed a pair of light balls in his palms and shoved them into the attacker's chest. There was a blinding light and the attacker's scream of pain was drowned out by the ensuing explosion that blasted them apart. Izuku landed on his back and consequently the quills embedded there but they were at best a nuisance compared to the damage to his face and the concussive shockwave of the blast. For a moment Izuku couldn't see anything. He couldn't hear anything and the only thing he felt was pain than darkness. Literally. He started to subconsciously draw on the dark side of his powers. He wanted the pain gone. He wanted it to stop and slowly the pain numbed like running water over a burn. It was soothing and after a moment he gathered his bearings and staggered to his feet. He blinked a few times to get his vision straight and saw the man with his shirt now burnt getting up as well. Yui snarled I'm gonna kill you for thaw. Izuku cut him off with a well-placed tendril wrapped around his foot and started slamming him into the ground. Bam. Crash. Slam. He paused then slammed him down two more times just to make sure he stayed down. Pant. Pant. Izuku took a tentative step forward but dropped to a knee when a spike of pain shot up his leg oh right. He got me in the leg. Izuku willed it and darkness covered his leg and he watched a little fascinated as the quill was pushed out of his skin. He will be writing that tidbit down, he did the same to the others before breathing a sigh of relief. Then he remembered the girl and his gaze reached her hay only to find that she was gone. When did she leave? How did she leave with that wound? Izuku wasn't a medical expert but he's pretty sure she wouldn't have been able to slip away so silently with wounds like that. Was her quirk some kind of healing ability? That still doesn't explain why she left but after thinking about it for a moment he shook his head and limped over to his phone. 911 what is your emergency? Izuku. Inko opened the door to see her son lying in the hospital bed looking like a deer caught in the headlights. Rather than watch his expression she took stock of the bandages covering his face hand and leg. And mom, I it's really not as bad as it looks. It was far too late for reassurance though wah. My baby. Inko crossed the room so fast people would be mistaken about her quirk and Izuku soon found himself smothered in a hug. After a moment of wailing came the rapid fire questions are you alright? Who did this to you? How did this happen? I would like to know the same thing as well. Mother and son turned to see a man in a trench coat take off his hat as he closed the door. He had a friendly, if plain, face as he regarded them. Who might you be? Inko asked and Izuku felt her clutch him just a little tighter. My name is Officer Tsukachi. I already answered some questions sir. I know. I'm not here to ask about the fight rather I would like know the identity of the girl you allegedly saved. I am sorry. I don't know her. She left before I could talk to her. The man took out a notepad you said she was injured? Oh yeah. He um got her in the leg with one of his quills. About this girl. You said that she wore a school uniform right? Yeah Hizuku nodded. At his grave expression and co asked what is it? Over the past month there has been a reported increase in the number of assaults in that region. 
The victims were all teenage boys and the one thing they all had in common was that the perpetrator was a young girl in a school uniform. Sound familiar? Izuku sputtered in shocked confusion BB but I, I saw her get attacked. According to Yamaha, the boy you fought, he said she was the one to attack him first with a box cutter and that he was acting in self-defense. He had defensive wounds on his hands which supports his story. Now I'm not saying that Yamaha is an innocent however based on the evidence presented he was the victim in this instance. Inko turned a worried glance to her son Izuku. He didn't hear her and looked away reeling from the news I let a villain get away he mumbled but it was clearly heard by the other occupants of the room. It was an honest mistake, really. You saw a defenseless girl being attacked and you assumed what any other person would Izuku didn't respond what were you doing out there anyway? I was training. You want to be a hero don't you? At Izuku's nod he chuckled a little I'm not surprised. A lot of kids these days want to be heroes he frowned a little it's not my place to judge but you should be careful about what your expectations are. Being a hero isn't as glamorous as some make it to be. There is a fine line between bravery and recklessness. Not to say that taking a decisive action is necessarily bad but it's always best to think things through before you act. Izuku was still silent but now he was looking at the officer. Is there anything else sir? Um, no I just wanted to warn you to be careful. We don't know how this person operates so it's best to go home earlier from now on. Needless to say the entire ordeal had Izuku question himself. His keen yet still young analytical mind that would be used to observe others was now turned inwards as he introspected. He had always prided himself on being a person who thinks things through except he didn't. Not this time around and admittedly this wasn't the first time something like this happened. Well it was his first life and death situation, but it felt eerily familiar. He'd spent a good portion of the following day thinking about it and he found the connection. He could distantly remember the first time his quirk manifested. He was actually shocked it took him so long to make the connection as that day was ingrained in his mind in perfect clarity. Just like that time he rushed into a confrontation without thinking it through and got himself beaten up for it. Instead of say, calling an adult over to break up the fight, he went to fight himself despite knowing he didn't have a chance. Did he regret his decision? No he did not and it wasn't because the action resulted in his quirk manifesting. The regret was that he didn't even consider an alternative and not just tattling so someone else could deal with it. He literally had no plan aside from getting in front of Kaken and hoping things work out. It was the same this time around. Izuku's body reacted before his brain could think of anything and by the time it caught up he had already thrown a light grenade. Why did that happen? The first time around he manifested his quirk but he still ended up taking a beating from Kaken not to mention ending up on the boy's personal shitlist for the years to come. This time he prevented someone from getting killed but in the act he got a beating, beat up the apparent victim, let the bad guy or girl free to assault more people and ended up on some guy's personal shit list, again. He didn't regret his decision but the fact that he didn't even bother to consider making an actual plan bothered him the most. Who knows what that girl would have done if she wasn't injured? He shivered thinking about it. Izuku had to put off training for a week in order to allow his wounds to heal which took roughly two days with his accelerated healing factor but decided to take a few extra days to ease his mother's worry. Izuku wasn't upset by that. He too was worried and there weren't any late night assaults which could be both good and bad at the same time. Eventually though Izuku got a little stir crazy with so much free time after developing his schedule to include training. He managed to get his mother to acquiesce for the weekends at the very least since the girl apparently operated on school nights. It was a start. So it was with that, Izuku made his way to the seaside park training ground, compared to when he found it. There were few garbage bags around. Somewhere last year he decided to make his training something of a public service, especially since his stronger light attacks tend to leave nothing but easily cleanable scorch marks. Even now he could see the soot marks on the sand from the times a light grenade exploded taking along a few years of waste. As of now mostly scrap metal too tough to be incinerated was left. To his left was a rusted old open back truck piled with various scrap metal he heaped on via shadow manipulation. Or was it darkness manipulation? Sometimes he got the two mixed up considering his shadow is a form of darkness. He blew a breath okay, let's get started. Immediately he dropped and started doing 50 push-ups, sit-ups and squats. It took him a while but eventually he formulated a workout routine that maximizes not only his physical exercise but also his quirk usage, taking into consideration the extra energy afforded to him via solar absorption and night augmentation. After the not too intense physical workout he went on with practicing with his quirk. He would like to think he was now comfortable with his dual powers though he knew he was far from mastering them. For what he knew of his quirk from experience was that his light powers are dependent heavily on his physical state. The more fit he was the more he will be able to use it. Overuse would result in physical exhaustion that could result in him passing out. For his dark powers it's naturally stronger at night and is dependent on his intelligence and also his emotional state. He found out the latter part after he attempted to overuse it. 
He thought he would get something like a massive headache but instead he got more aggressive, pessimistic and moody. Another thing he noted was although the darkness became weaker the more it's used, the quality improved as his mind descended. In the end he had enough semblance to switch over to his light powers and filter out the excess angst. That was an experience. Now that the thought had come up he couldn't help but compare the two powers though to be honest there isn't much of a comparison other than the fact he could generate them out of thin air. They both handled differently causing Izuku to take different approaches with them. He could produce light like a flash, explosive and blast it like a laser though he hadn't been able to yet. As for darkness he could manipulate it into objects or move it into an attack. He can't blast darkness but he can shroud things like a net and levitate them. This time around as an experiment he will attempt to manifest them both at once. To be honest he was very reluctant to do this but depending on the result he'd want to know what could happen. Izuku was curious enough to want to explore everything he can about his very unique quirk. After all, the more you know. He held up his palms and gulped please don't go wrong with that he manifested a light orb in one palm and attempted to summon a dark ball in the other. Already he could feel a kind of strain. His temperature fluctuated a little and a bead of sweat rolled down his face. It was like his body was attempting to pull to one of the two opposing forces but he kept it even. Then something unexpected happened. The two orbs started pulling together. Izuku strained further as his hands were compelled closer until the orbs combined above his cupped hands. At this point Izuku was panting but he ignored the fatigue to stare at the pure black ball with a glowing white center. Izuku was in complete awe of his creation. A wide smile split his face I did it. Crack. The smile vanished as a crack appeared trailing light veins on one side of the black marble. Another crack occurred this time within the light marble spilling black veins. At that point Izuku knew his control was slipping and thinking fast he tossed the ball near the truck. Amazingly it rolled underneath it and Izuku ran behind garbage cover to brace himself for the mother of all explosion. But none came and instead he was treated to a short hum then silence. After a moment he lifted his head from cover to view the result of the power breakdown. His jaw promptly dropped at the sight or rather a lack thereof as most of the truck was gone. The sand and part of the front of the truck had a curve. It was as if a perfect sphere was carved through the truck. Izuku had a good idea what exactly happened. He approached the truck to get a closer look and even touched the groove of the newly carved truck. It was a perfectly smooth curve. It was as if it was designed like that amazing there were no marks, no burns, no smell. If Izuku's didn't know what it looked like before he would have that it was some weird piece of abstract art. No doubt it was dangerous and taxing yet Izuku couldn't help but want to try again. But first, I need to write this down. He turned around and got his book Fusion of Dark and Light Powers a success. We'll have to try again with adjusted power he paused and think of possible name. That was his favorite part, naming special attacks. Wow, Izuku tensed and spun around to see a girl with her back turned observing the truck. Then she spun around with hands relaxed behind her back, feet rocking slightly. Cat-like eyes zeroed on him as a small smile adorned her face that also had a healthy flush. That was really cool. So, you working on your quirk? Izuku could only stare at her gobsmacked wondering who she was, how and when she got there and is she talking to me. On instinct he looked behind him just to see if by some incredible coincidence that someone was behind him. No one was there and Izuku turned to see her looking right at him with a fusion of amusement and something that was foreign to him. Girls don't really talk to him willingly except his mother and he wasn't pining for attention either considering how utterly terrible he was with dealing with them. Case in point. Uh, you don't have to answer that. I could tell she stage whispered. Was it just him or was she blushing? Izuku began sputtering but was silenced as she continued I never saw a quirk that could do that before she traced the contours of the truck what kind of quirk is it anyway? She eyed him curiously. Izuku blinked at the question to really get a good at her, then remembered his earlier thoughts why you were ww watching M me. She stared for a moment before her eyes crinkled yeah I couldn't help but notice how cool you look back there. A girl called me cool they both turned even more red though Izuku's was a few shades deeper. I it was nothing he managed to squeak out. That's not true, I think you're interesting and she meant it he could tell. He averted his gaze, he never thought it would be so difficult to take a compliment from a girl. T thanks him, Himiko Toga, M Midoriya Izu Izuku. Her smile widened Izuku. Izuku tugged at his collar is it getting warmer? Himiko-san. The girl pouted that's not fair Izuku, you shouldn't use any honorific either. Izuku began to panic a little when she began advancing on him, he almost took a step back. She leaned down too close for Izuku's comfort, peered into his eyes and said now say my name, Taga. H hi hi I mean Toga-san. She smiled again and Izuku felt a chill down his spine. Instincts took over and this time he did take a step back. I have to go. He still had two hours but he didn't think he would be able to concentrate with her there. The disappointment was clear on her face already, I thought you had more time. I promised my mom I would go home early that early was still two hours away but she didn't need to know that. Toga shrugged guess it can't be helped then she smiled see you next time Izuku. 
Why yeah he said awkwardly and walked away a little faster than necessary. The next day Izuku arrived at the seaside park to see a familiar face. H Himiko-san. Again the girl pouted I told you before Izuku, it's Toga, just Toga. Hi, is it really that hard to say my name? She asked with a tilt of her head. Izuku averted his gaze and mumbled something. H.M., but we just met yesterday he argued, surprised he didn't stutter. Then I guess we'll just have to get to know each other Izuku. W. We will. She gave an impish grin showing her pointed canines yep you'll get to know stuff about me and she paused to look at him with slightly glazed eyes I'll learn everything about you. For some reason that declaration had Izuku nervous and not in the embarrassed way. Before he could speak she turned around come on I'll help you train. Izuku stood where he was for a moment. He may not have much experience talking to girls but he knew a setup when he saw one and for whatever reason he couldn't help but feel she had an ulterior motive. So it was with that Izuku spent the day with the taller girl and true to her word. She did help him in her own way which was mostly keeping his mind distracted from the pain of his labor with her never-ending chatter while keeping count. Even though he hung onto his suspicion like a life raft out at the raging sea that was Himiko Toga there was something fresh about having a girl cheering him on. He'd always heard about how that could have an effect on guys but didn't believe it. The proof was in the pudding when he didn't even notice he did 20 extra push-ups, sit-ups and squats. Yet he still had enough energy to do quirk training. Speaking of which it was during the middle of said training that Himiko decided to ask, Have you ever been in a fight? Izuku paused the shadow did as well um a few times, why? He's been in a few fights but had a record going for the one-sided beatdowns. Well I think if you're preparing to be a hero you should know how to fight. I know how to fight he defended remembering his time against Yamaha the porcupine. Toga's expression was unreadable before she said show me. Hey. She got up from where she sat and approached him show me how you fight. I I can't. Why? Izuku sputtered for a moment trying to find the words why you could get hurt. Toga's response was to laugh much to his confusion don't worry about me Izuku, I can take care of myself. But, Izuku she interrupted do you want to hurt me? No, he answered immediately. She tilted her head, expression unreadable that's too bad cause I definitely want to hurt you. Shing. At the end Himiko gave a deranged smile and produced a box cutter out of nowhere before charging at the stun team. Izuku stepped back and tripped over his feet as Himiko slashed. He landed on his rear and felt his cheek, drawing back his hand he saw blood. The wound itself was shallow enough to heal in the sunlight, and Toga smiled wider as she continued the assault straddling him. You're so cool Izuku, I bet you'd look even cooler covered in blood. Just as she stabbed down there was a bright light and she flew off and landed a few feet away oh, as she sat up to see a panic-stricken boy with two light orbs in each palm. She stared at him for a minute before bonking her head oops. I guess I overdid it she got up and dusted her skirt before clasping her hands and bowing sorry for freaking you out like that. I saw a villain do that once and I thought it would look believable if I tried since I'm a villain but I got into it a little too much she gave an awkward chuckle. Izuku didn't move but after a moment of staring at her bashful form, she fidgeted awkwardly and the light orbs dissipated. Are you okay? Dot 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 yeah. I'm really sorry. It's okay was the automatic response but Izuku wasn't okay. He was so far from okay that he reached orbit. Cautiously he walked over to his bag making sure to keep her in his line of sight I have to go he mumbled already getting his bag. Oh I understand she smiled at him but Izuku was too shell shocked to get flustered by it. He walked away briskly by he turned to see her give a jaunty wave which Izuku tentatively returned before walking out of view and running the rest of the way home. The moment he left her eyes glazed over a little and her smile widened before bringing the box cutter to her face and after admiring the red liquid smeared on it she dragged her tongue over the blade and licked up the speckle of blood before shuddering in ecstasy. Cupping her cheeks to fight down the growing blush her glazed over eyes looked to the moon as she whispered catch you later Izuku. Izuku bit back a groan as the final bell rang. He had been dreading this part of the day which was odd because most children his age would jump at the chance to get out of school. In fact some of them actually did, literally jumped out the door a moment after the bell rang using a quirk that allowed their legs to coil up like springs. Sighing in resignation Izuku packed his bag slowly and with trepidation. He was seated near the back of the class dead center, an ideal place that's not too far for him to be distracted by some of the seedier happenings the teacher is unaware of, yet not so close that said teacher notices when he makes some jotting in his other notebook. Not that anyone really pays attention to him anyhow, he still retains his title of quirkless so as far as anyone is concerned he's not worth the time spared, or so he would like to believe but as of late he has been getting some unwanted attention. Thankfully it is only for this time of the day but it still nonetheless irked him. In the end he resigned to his fate with a sigh, slung his backpack on and trudged out the door with the enthusiasm of a man on death row. He kept his head low more so because he was in thought than he was trying to avoid anyone's eyes. Izuku wasn't famous so much as he was infamous for not having a quirk but he was such a wallflower who was coincidentally popular with the teachers that people didn't antagonize him. As he walked out his green eyes warily scanned the gate leading outside the school. 
to his mortification he was not to be spared today either. Leaning by the gate with legs crossed, messenger bag held before them by both hands, smile in place while humming a tune was the cause of his current distress. Her eyes flickered to him and she broke out into a grin that had him brace himself I-Z-U-K-U. The shout drew looks from the surrounding students and Izuku ducked his head, a fierce blush permeating his face. His steps hurried until he was outright running. Izuku wasn't one to stand out. Years of living in Katsuki's shadow made him avoid the spotlight. This situation was anything but ideal for him so he wanted to be as far away from school as possible. Hey, wait up Izuku. He could hear her trying to catch up to him but Izuku had been running long distance relentlessly almost every day for almost a year and a half. If he couldn't outpace her then either she had a speed quirk or he was wasting his time training. Izuku ended up running straight towards the seaside park without stopping. He was winded but nowhere near tired. The same couldn't be said for his pursuer who ended up having to lean against the rails as she wheezed that was mean Izuku. Running away like that she looked at him. Her face flushed. He would have thought from the run but he's come to realize that her face was always flushed for some reason. As sorry I just needed tea to get away F from S school he averted his gaze. He hated stuttering like that. He'd build up his confidence a lot since he moved but that was in general and unfortunately talking to girls without getting tongue-tied was a work in progress. Talking to Himiko was even worse because she comes on strong and was almost always smiling. She sprung up it's okay. We should get started on your training before Izuku could reply his hand was grabbed and he was pulled down to the beach. Dot 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 she comes on very strong. Izuku's relationship with Himiko was a complicated one. While Izuku would like to have a friend Himiko was, for lack of a better term, too good to be true. Izuku had been thinking about how he would approach things ever since his incident with that gangster a month ago. He'd start off observing people from a distance beginning with his classmates since they were the most convenient. One of the things he learned about himself was that his perception of a situation affected how he would react. There couldn't be a better example than the incident itself. At first glance it looked like the man was assaulting an innocent girl. It also didn't help that he looked like a delinquent while the victim was a nondescript girl. Izuku saw the situation as a classic hero saved the, the damsel in distress type situation and sprung into action while ignoring what the man was saying, accusing her. Izuku greatly chided himself when he realized he was given sufficient clues to deduce something was wrong with the situation in the first place but he ignored it in favor of stopping the villain. As it relates to Himiko, at first it was pretty obvious to him why she wanted to hang out. Katsuki had two followers because of his quirk being literally flashy and explosive. Izuku could emit, manipulate and combine light and darkness, a possibly flashier, more explosive not to mention rare quirk. That's what he thought at first but Himiko didn't look particularly drawn to his quirk other than fascinated or impressed. She spent the entire day afterwards helping him train and cheering him on all the time with a smile on her face and a blush on her cheeks. Izuku started to wonder if she was, dare he say it actually interested in him. Again it sounded too good to be true but at that point he was giving her the benefit of the doubt. Then she asked him to spar with her and any preconceptions he had was shattered when she pulled a knife out of nowhere and cut his cheek open. Granted it was shallow enough for it to heal within minutes but what had him truly frightened was the look on her face, the way her eyes dimmed, how wide her smile was and the absolute glee in her voice when she tried to stab him. She said it was an act and tried to laugh it off but Izuku wasn't convinced for a minute. In fact the way how she laughed it off made him even more suspicious of her. Izuku would never again let his guard down around her which was fortunate because she showed up every day afterwards to hang out. Since she remained adamant about copying whatever it was the previous day from something she saw a villain do he decided to ask her which villain it was. He never did get an answer. Days turned into weeks with Izuku silently observing Himiko through their growing friendship and he came to the conclusion that she was most definitely weird and not because she actually wants to befriend him. With that said he couldn't help but suspect she was after something but what it is he couldn't figure out. The only thing unique about him was his quirk. He wasn't rich, didn't have any connection to any rich, famous person, hero or villain and his personality is about as interesting as a hero fanboy, nerd. All of it should point out that he had nothing to worry about but the uncertainty was always there. He couldn't help but compare her to Katsuki despite the fact that she acts the complete opposite of him. But it was her eyes. Sometimes he caught her looking from the corner of his eyes when she thought he wasn't and what he saw frightened him. It has been close to a month since they've known each other and though he is less frightened and more used to her quirky attitude, he is not too trusting of her even now. Especially considering she still carries around a box cutter strapped to her thigh for reasons. He was honestly too afraid to ask why she did but he'd give her the benefit of the doubt. It's not like he could judge people for being weird, just look at him. Forgetting what he didn't know about her Izuku had gotten know a lot about her. The most obvious is that she attends a private middle school located several blocks away. She's apparently an only child and while her family is well off, her parents are usually too busy to be there, often leaving her to her own devices, which is apparently hanging out with him for most of her free time. 
Excluding his precarious relationship with Himiko Izuku continued to hone his quirk. Izuku feels he has at least mastered the basics of his quirk, able to form light and dark at any time he so chooses. That doesn't mean he's slacking off though. There is always work to be done and a new goal to be set to achieve. This time Izuku wanted to master a little technique he called void release by far the most dangerous and lethal aspect of his quirk, the fusion of his light and dark powers. It's the reason why he's still trying so hard in his physical exercises, as to make a single void ball is so taxing that he would feel like he did a marathon afterwards and the misery would creep and the misery would creep in at the edge of his mind. The ball itself was barely enough to fit into his palm yet the power behind it was devastating. It wasn't that the objects he threw the void ball at were destroyed so much as they ceased to exist. The few times he's tried proved that it was without a doubt the single most unstoppable force since all might. Nothing was safe. Metal, sand even the water itself were erased from this world when it comes into contact with it, oftentimes leaving a ball-shaped hole that fills up with water after a few seconds. The true danger and cause for training is its stability. With each void ball Izuku had about 5 seconds to throw it at something or it would blow up in his face and considering how things ended up he did not want to be caught in that explosion. Some people are immune to their quirk's power, but Izuku isn't dumb enough to believe it applied to him. The few close calls he'd had with that particular aspect made him only attempt void control once or twice every few weeks as a measure of his progress. Since it relies on both aspects of his quirk Izuku could say that it was the best way to do so. It also has the added bonus of clearing away some of the tougher garbage on the beach. Currently Izuku is proud to say at least half the total garbage on the beach has been cleared. He is also proud to note that he is no longer a walking fishbone but that was for another time. Still he gave his arm an experimental flex and felt the modest muscle build up and grin to himself. Meanwhile Himiko grinned at Izuku grinning. It was clear what he was doing and she found it so adorable she had to grab her cheeks to cool them down. It's been a month now since she has met the short, kind, smart, adorkable boy that was Midoriya Izuku. A month consisting of watching, talking, awkward stutters, blushing and so much smiling. Himiko can't remember the last time she'd ever been so happy being around someone without her compulsions acting up. She'd swear to herself that she would learn everything about Midoriya Izuku because she liked him. Because she wanted to be like him, because she wanted to become him but after a month she's starting to wonder if that is a good idea. Looking at him now. Earnestly working on his quirk, could she really be like him? Himiko is a great many things. Mysterious, slightly ditzy, strange, cute, dangerous and maybe just a little unhinged but he didn't need to know about that last part. Not that he isn't sufficiently paranoid to have his guard up through her sincere attempt to befriend him. Oh she's noticed that too. Not that it was hard to see nor was it not well deserved. She did acknowledge she was dangerous after all. Yet it said something about someone who's willing to give her the benefit of the doubt and be nice to her even after she cut him. Hum she stared dreamily off in the distance for a bit before shaking her head no, bad Himiko she chided herself, now that she thought of it. Back then was more of a Pyrrhic victory since she ended up shattering his tentatively good first impression of her with that single impulsive action. In her defense she couldn't help it, the thought of seeing him all bloody and damaged after a hard battle still sent a pleasant chill down her spine. For once Himiko took her eyes off of him and looked to the sky it's not like I was wrong. She did have a point about combat back then but it was such a disaster she doubted he could ever trust her to that effect again which really sucks because she knows it would benefit him and if he gets a few cuts in the process then it's a bonus. But how do I convince him? Himiko wasn't as dumb as she let on. Izuku will never fight her. She couldn't be playful with it. She could appeal to his logic but rather than fight her he would just find some other way to accomplish it. One of the things she admired about him was that under his diminishing insecurities was ingenuity and drive to accomplish his goals. But she wanted to fight him. She needed to know where he stood. Sure having a powerful quirk helps but as she saw in an old movie once, even the most powerful quirks will lose against someone with better skills. Ah screw it, this is for his own good anyway. Izuku inadvertently shivered which was quite a feat since he was directly in sunlight while using his light powers. Then he realized something vital, something so important that he kicked himself for forgetting. He took his eyes off Himiko. Spinning around Izuku was just in time to see Himiko liberating the box cutter strap from her thigh while lifting her skirt to get it. For a moment Izuku thought he saw a flash of her. No, evil thoughts begone. He admonished fiercely. T Toga-san, W what are you d doing? She frowned and looked a little exasperated I told you. You don't need to add any honorifics Izuku, just Himiko will do. And I'm getting ready for our spar this was pronounced when she extended the blade in the box cutter. Izuku's eyes widened and he took an involuntary step back you um, and maybe we ss shouldn't. It's for your own good. How are you supposed to be a hero if you don't know how to fight? Izuku winced. He had been meaning to do something about that. That doesn't mean I have a death wish he thought eyeing the box cutter warily. Himiko saw this and it took a moment before she let out a long O and bonked her head down. 
To his shock she tossed the offensive weapon away and stretched a little before settling into what Izuku would guess was a fighting stance. Okay I'm ready. Izuku stared at her in confusion. For some reason he glanced behind him as if there was some other guy she was referring to, which in hindsight was a mistake on his part. But he turned around just in time to see Himiko's palm inches from his face where he closed his eyes at the last second. Smack. Oh. After clutching his face Izuku found himself falling to his back and shortly after something heavy landed on his chest. He looked up to see two fingers pointed dead center of his eyes you lose the fingers were removed to reveal Himiko's smiling face with the customary red tinge Izuku was convinced was some kind of medical condition. Or maybe she felt the way he did because he immediately noticed their position before his face burned crimson. Sputtering a mile a minute he tried to extricate himself from under her but she waved a finger in front of his face. Sorry Izuku but I'm a villain remember. You're a hero so you'll have to use your quirk to fight me. Bibibiba. She pressed a finger to his lips and adopted a serious expression Izuku. You can't put off fighting me forever. I mean the next villain you face might kill you, you know. Izuku paled at her words. It was especially unsettling with how blasé she delivered them. He thought back to his first fight and winced a little bit. Truthfully that guy wasn't even a villain, just some delinquent and, in hindsight, he wasn't all that threatening. At least not if Izuku had used his quirk to its fullest capacity. He knew a little better now but it wasn't anything to brag about and should something like that happen again. Izuku turned his gaze away for a moment. Face still red but no longer burning maybe just this once he muttered. She fought down the face splitting grin that gave Izuku nightmares and cheered great. Now for your first lesson, try to get yourself free. He didn't have to hear that twice and it took no time at all as once Himiko saw his bright green eyes dim and she rolled off of him just in time to escape a shadow tendril. She ran backwards when he pressed the attack to gain some distance. Izuku got up looking a little unsure are you sure this is a good idea Toga or Himiko-san? The pout she was about to give him washed away and she nodded don't worry Izuku, I'm pretty good with that she went at him. Izuku sent shadow tendrils at her but to his shock she deftly avoided them with an unnatural swiftness that has to be her quirk. Now that got the gears in his mind turning at an increased rate what is her quirk? You're distracted she said suddenly before him. Uh. He raised a shadow shield only to be slapped across the face. Hard. Izuku stumbled but it provided enough of a distraction for Himiko to throw him to the ground and twist his arm behind his back. Himiko took a moment to look at their position idly musing about her hasty decision to discard her box cutter. But shook her head I bet right about now you think I'm using my quirk right. Izuku's curiosity was piqued are you? She hummed and thought before close to his ears and whispering beat me and find out. Himiko could feel him getting warm and it took a moment to realize that it wasn't just because of her actions. A golden light alerted her and she attempted a retreat to little effect as she was blasted off of him. Himiko felt a stinging sensation over her torso but aside from that she was alright. Not for long though as Izuku started lobbing grenades at her. The first one she manages to dodge, however it was a flash grenade that temporarily blinded her. With her sight gone she was left open for another one that blew her back near a pile of junk. Better she thought rubbing out her eyes only to hear something land beside her. Himeko rolled a second before the grenade went off creating a small sand screen in which she used as cover to escape. The moment she was out of sight Izuku switched to dark control and looked around. The beach was empty. Where is she? He looked again. There were footprints in the sand leading to a tall junk pile where he headed towards warily. Come into my parlor, said the spider to the fly her voice eerily said. Izuku paused this has trap written all over it he thought looking around, trying to find a trace of her from his spot. What would All Might do? Eventually he mustered up the courage to pursue her. After a few minutes he found that Himiko was really good at hiding. There were no footprints, no shuffling sands, it's like she vanished. It's not like the junk pile was big yet he has been trying to find her for a while now, always on guard. He paused to think about everything he knew from the short confrontation with Himiko. She was fast, able to dodge close attacks unnaturally. Could it be her quirk was? Short-range teleportation. It made sense yet Izuku wasn't about to bank everything on that before hearing it straight from her mouth. Boo. Ah. Uh. Izuku jumped back clutching his heart while Himiko laughed her head off. It took a moment. A really long moment for Izuku to figure out what just happened and when he did his face turned crimson with indignation and tears actually brimmed at his eyes. T that wasn't funny Himiko. Suddenly she froze and eyed him what did you just say? Izuku flinched at that and took an involuntary step back as she walked briskly in his personal space to stare into his eyes. Now very uncomfortable with her invasion of his space and feeling self-conscious he swallowed but replied I I said it wasn't funny talk. H-I-M-I-K-O. She interrupted fiercely with a wide smile you called me Himiko she was actually bouncing at this point. Taking a step back from the suddenly cheerful girl Izuku had a thoughtful expression on his face how I guess I did. This is cause for a celebration. And before he knew it, she dragged him off again. 
I never expected my day to end up like this. Sitting next to Himiko Toga on the beach of a dilapidated seaside park while watching the sunset, and eating crepes. It was so surreal to Izuku for a moment he had to pinch himself to make sure he wasn't dreaming, and even then he took subtle glances at Himiko cheerfully eating her crepe to make sure he wasn't hallucinating. It's no good. Izuku blinked huh? Is it no good? He looked to the pastry and shook his head no I was just, thinking. He then took a bite while mumbling to save himself from speaking anymore. Himiko scoffed I'll say. They ate in silence for a while and at the end before they walked their separate ways Izuku made a decision um. I just wanted to say thank you for this Himiko-san. He flashed her a grateful smile that lit up his features. For her part Himiko stared at him in stunned silence before her perma flush grew and she grinned at him hey, what are friends for? Izuku smiled just a little wider at her see you tomorrow. With that he ran off. See ya, Izuku. Unlike him though she took slow steady strides. A smile on her face the entire time for she too had made a decision regarding her precarious relationship with Izuku. Sighing contently she continued on her way while humming a cheerful tune. His eyes fluttered open and the first thing he noticed was the smell, his nose wrinkled in disgust. He tried to move but was met with resistance prompting him to see what was wrong. Both his arms and legs were bound to the chair. What the fuck? He mumbled throat hoarse. He tried to force his hands and legs but only managed to rattle the chains cutting into his skin. Oh you're finally awake. He paused. His darted to where the sound was coming from who's there. He was met with silence and sweat began to form on his brow. You know who you're dealing with asshole. I'll fucking kill you. Thunk. He stared down at the butcher's knife that was suddenly brought down on his pinky and screamed. Oh you shouldn't scream so loudly Yamaha. It's only a finger the figure walked around to face him. Why you? He said the fear now palpable. The figure smiled let's get you nice and bloody, and brought down the knife again. A shabby looking apartment complex with some bars on the windows. Walls smeared with some graffiti stood on an equally shabby looking street filled with garbage. Men of questionable intent stood on the corner with their features obscured by hoods or hats. The alleyways were filled with garbage, graffiti smeared some of the walls and there was a noticeable gloom about the place. Despite all this Himiko Toga was in a good mood. She didn't know exactly when it started happening or even why it did but she could honestly say she was in as good a mood as she had ever been in a long, long time. Because of this, as it is with most young preteen girls, it had to do with a boy. A timid, strong-willed, weak, strong, nerdy and adorkable boy by the name of Izuku Midori. Could this be what love feels like? Her cheeks burned at the thought and she could feel the temperature through her palms. It made her giddy with anticipation to see him today. So much so that she was tempted to sneak inside the school and give him a surprise visit. She shook her head at that no, none of that. Izuku isn't that type of boy. He wasn't like her old boyfriends and he definitely wasn't like him. Yet at the same time she found herself drawn to him even though not much blood has been spilled. Now she's convinced it has to be love. With that thought in mind she happily skipped along. Why do I suddenly have a bad feeling? His eyes shifted to the clock oh it's about that time. About that time for him to go about his training and with Himiko. He gulped at that. There was no doubt Himiko Toga has been a great help this past year and even though she has her quirks he could tentatively say that she was a friend. A very bubbly and oddly cute friend whom has wormed her way into that position through sheer persistence. And the fact that he still hasn't gotten over his slight stuttering problem with her. Which brings him to his latest dilemma with his sort of friend. Lately it feels like the dynamic in their relationship has changed and for the life of him he couldn't figure out when, how or why. He no doubt realized he's all but dropped his guard around her and it's thanks to in part by Himiko herself. Somehow, sometime during their year-long reluctant acquaintanceship turned friendship she changed. And by the gods he can't pinpoint when she did, how she did it and for what reason. Izuku shouldn't have really thought of it as much as he did but damn did it get to him. Someone who has been analyzing those around him for so long yet missed a change in someone who has been arguably the closest to him since his mother. What the heck has he been looking at all this time? Why am I thinking about this anyway? He asked himself. Then he realized why. Yesterday by pure coincidence his mother met them while they were walking together from the halfway mark store. Needless to say the ensuing conversation was the most embarrassingly awkward and fearful he'd ever had with his mother. Now she expects Himiko to be his girlfriend at some point if she doesn't already think that. Izuku was half afraid that his mother would get the same vibe he did when he first met her or she'd showed one of her odd quirks. To his surprise nothing of the sort happened and that's when he truly noticed the change. It would have been all good for the conversation to have been left off at that point but his mother was so impressed by her that she invited her to dinner. And that's why he's been thinking of his girlfriend girlfriend, friend who happens to be a girl. Aw oh, now she's got me thinking about it. He never pegged his mother for the teasing type but she shattered that preconception when she milked it with the insinuation when he went home. It was even more surprising because he'd never actually thought of Himiko that way since she slashed his cheek with a box cutter. 
Yeah, he's not going to open that can of worms after the epiphany he just had. A month into his hand-to-hand -hand combat training with Himiko and Izuku found that despite his great power and strategic thinking, more times than not Himiko would beat him, sometimes literally. The first time she had him in a sleeper, another time she wrapped her legs around his neck and threatened to strangle him. That was an experience. Of course she never actually pulled through but the fact remains that he was still caught unawares and if it were a villain then 9 times out of 10 he would be dead. It also didn't help that Himiko was horribly blunt in the ways she could have ended him and not to mention graphic details that raised a lot of questions he was frankly too scared to ask for some time. When he eventually did ask how she knew all this, she said her family hired an ex-veteran soldier to teach her self-defense. Apparently the man was dedicated to his job. She also mentioned that he might have been off his medication and that he held some very interesting insights into the art of lethal. Izuku decided not to pry into her life any further. Either way he decided that a change in regiment was required as he'll need to have combat training down to not be helpless in a close-range battle. As his frequent spars with Himiko showed, his powers only work for mid to long range fights. He knew he'd have to change that soon and changed it he did. Some days Himiko regretted opening Izuku's eyes to his inadequacies in combat situations. Nowadays she saw less of his presence as he devoted the time they would spend at the seaside park to learn martial arts. Something she would have been happy to teach if she actually knew how to teach properly. Luckily today was not to be one of those days as she had a surprise in store for him. She smiled as the door opened. Himiko-san. Hello Mrs. Midoriya. Her smile was so brittle that the younger girl could see it from a mile away. I'm sorry is this a bad time? Well no I just wasn't expecting you. Um. It's alright Mrs. Midoriya. A new voice spoke up and she made way for a tall man in a coat. I already said what I came to say. Thank you detective. Himiko maintained her expression as the detective gave her a nod which she returned, and head to the parked car she saw across the street. Himiko-san that got her attention please come and the young girl obliged I'm sorry about that. I wasn't expecting company so soon the woman frantically spoke would you like some tea? Yes thank you she said politely. As Inko scrambled for the kitchen Himiko took the chance to look around the home. It was average size if not a bit small but enough to hold mother and son. She'd seen this place before but always from afar and now that she was in it, she couldn't help but feel at home. Her gaze then swept to the woman of the house. Despite being of age she had a pretty face with a slim figure and straight long dark green hair tied into a small ponytail with the rest just reaching above her shoulder. From the way how she was operating right now Himiko could also tell where Izuku got his worry wart nature from. Himiko took a sip of tea it's delicious. Thank you Mrs. Midoriya she said honestly. The woman managed to smile at the compliment you are welcome her eyes then drifted to the clock. It wouldn't have seemed like much except that was the twelfth time in six minutes she did that and so Himiko was compelled to ask did I come at a bad time? H.M. No, heavens no it's just that. She trailed off. Did it have something to do with that man? She guessed. At this in co-side and placed the tea down no. Rather it was what he had to say she looked to the clock again. What did he say? And Ko drummed her fingers against the teacup she held for a moment before speaking a few months ago Izuku was jogging home late one night when he witnessed a girl being assaulted. That's all for today Izuku spoke an elderly man with short gray hair and a thick gray mustache wearing a black shirt with gray pants. Izuku clad in a training gi stopped his kata and bowed towards the man thank you Shishu he bowed. I will be seeing you again tomorrow. Yes. The elderly man chuckled his mustache quivering at the gesture. Izuku meanwhile went to change out of his gi. Afterwards he said farewell to the deceptively frail looking elderly man whom he no doubt knew as a master martial artist of the highest caliber. How was he so sure of this? Because Izuku knew that in his prime the man used to be a hero and not just any hero but the hero formerly known as Silver Fang. At a time where quirks were still relatively new to the world he along with a handful of individuals were the first to be given the title of heroes in Japan. At the time tensions were high between normal people and the super-powered community. With a rise in crime and early villains making a power grab using their quirks, some of them were even bold enough to try taking over countries via a coup. The truth is Izuku along with everyone who ever called themselves heroes or hell most average quirk users owe him a debt of gratitude. He was one of the founding members of the Hero Association along with others such as Atomic Samurai, Tornado of Terror and Blast. All of them have now faded into obscurity with the rise of so many other quirk users. Izuku didn't like that. Those individuals of the first Hero Association did more than just stop villains. They gave the public, super-powered or not, hope and help stop the discrimination against the then few quirked individuals. What they stood for, what they fought for created the foundation for what modern heroes have built on over the decades. For them to just fade into the annals of history like this was a crime in and of itself. Though it's water under the bridge now, he still chastised himself for not recognizing a literal living legend when he walked through the doors of the dusty dojo. Though once he did he promptly fainted and when recovered asked for a lot of things including his autograph, acceptance into his dojo and a whole lot more. 
Back then the few heroes deliberately chose not to wear masks only wearing only sturdy outfits when they fought crime. It was as a way to not only gain the people's trust but to also distance themselves from vigilantes who took the law into their own hands often with violent results. And it worked, by God did it work. There is not a hero alive whom you can't gain information on because of it. Did it provide a risk to the individual's families? Yes, but there are safeguards put in place that for the most part keep a hero's next of kin safe from a deranged villain willing to use them. That is if they aren't meant with resistance as no one is without a quirk. To the matter at hand, he felt life dealt his shishu a bad hand. He is fully aware of the circumstances surrounding Silver Fang's retirement into obscurity and he understood why he chose to not bring himself any attention. At the same time Izuku couldn't bear to see the man like this, wasting away in a dilapidated dojo with not a single student to pass on his teachings to. Izuku did want to learn a bit of self-defense to not be caught off guard by an enemy who excels in close-range combat. But he made the decision long ago to become Silver Fang's disciple, become a master of Silver Fang's style that made him, at the time, one of the most formidable fighters in all of Japan and a recognized hero known across the world at one point. Of course Izuku knew that what he was trying to undertake was a nigh-impossible feat, to divide his time between studying for school, training his quirk, and learning an entire branch of martial arts was simply put beyond him. He would have to give up something in order to gain it and unfortunately that would have to be his quirk training. I could always train my quirk in Yui he said as he opened the door to his home I'm home he called out taking off his shoes. It was about that time a thought came to Izuku. His mind was so busy thinking about his teacher that he didn't bother to think about what was missing from his now routine walk from the dojo. Welcome back Izuku. How was your time at the dojo? Pause. That was not his mother. Robotically his body turned so slowly you could hear the squeaks until it was pointed to the kitchen where his mouth dropped in conjunction with his eyes bulging. Inside the kitchen with his mother was Himiko Toga wearing an apron. This is the type of change he was talking about for Himiko didn't look like the girl he had met before. She was still wearing that black sailor uniform that is a traditional middle school uniform but what really caught him off guard was her hair. It was straight, clean, shoulder length and done in a short ponytail. What am I looking at here? He had to question his eyes. Surprise. The girl yelled. W dot 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 how dot 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 why? I wanted to surprise you. Well she certainly achieved that much up. I'm going to go to my room. He squeaked before running up the stairs. Dinner will be ready in a few minutes his mother yelled out. Izuku barely heard it as he slammed his room door, locking it for good measure and began pacing wondering why Himiko just suddenly decided to go to his house, how she even knew his address, why his mother let her in and how long they were even together. There was a glass shattering effect as he realized that his mother and Himiko Toga were together, alone and unsupervised for an undetermined period of time. And judging by how his mother teased him about her the last time and how Himiko's personality is in the first place then dot 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 then dot dot dot. The following two minutes Izuku spent screaming into his pillow. Later that night, a man wearing a blue sneakers, black jeans and black hoodie, sunglasses and baseball cap walked the streets enjoying the sights. All the while he kept mumbling under his breath when his eyes caught someone. She was a dainty thing in a mini dress and blue jean jacket, a decent rack, wide hips and thick hips. Her skin was smooth, creamy and looked oh so juicy that his teeth grinded together. He had to have her. It took three hours for her date to be finished. Three tedious hours of resisting the urge, three days of watching her flesh being spoilt with contact by her date. But in the end it was all worth it when he finally caught her by herself while she was walking home. It was simple enough to catch her unawares and shove her into her apartment. What he wasn't prepared for was her quirk. A sonic scream ripped from her mouth and blasted him into the ceiling where he landed in a crumpled heap on the ground. She has some fight in her. Good. He liked when they resisted. It made cutting them down more rewarding. She screamed again but he leapt from his prone position in the air. Her scream was enough to deafen and disorient them at close and midrange but she wasn't as powerful as some heroes like say, present Mike. Now he was annoying. His teeth extended into spikes that pierced her leg, cutting her sonic scream into a regular one. The first thing he did after landing was to punch her in the throat causing her choke and grab it. He stood over her and opened his mouth. Time to claim my prize. It was not the first time tonight that Izuku wondered if he could make a noose out his clothes and hang himself by jumping off the couch. And here is Izuku when he thought he might have a quirk like deer and Mianko said fondly as she and Himiko shared a picture album. That's so cute Toga gushed. Death can't be this busy he silently thought to himself looking up to the heavens. As she turned the page to see an older triumphant Izuku with his palm glowing with light I recognize this. Ah and this is when he finally found out how to activate his quirk at will. Ah uh, it's getting kind of late Himiko-san, shouldn't you be going home? At this both females eyes went to the clock and saw that it was close to 9.30 uh. Time sure flies Himiko whistled as she got up and bowed to the matriarch thank you for your hospitality. The move shocked Izuku more than it did his mother who simply waved her off think nothing of it. Well I better get going. 
I'll walk you home Izuku immediately spoke. Himiko gave him a puzzled look before noticing his mother and smiled sure. As they walked down the street Izuku jumped straight to the chase why did you come to my house today? I wanted to surprise you. Izuku frowned Himiko-san. What? I am telling the truth. He raised an eyebrow really. Dot 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 okay fine she relented I wanted to talk to your mom. Why? She looked at him to get to know you better of course. He opened and closed his mouth but why? He pressed in confusion I mean there is really not much to know about me. Yes there is she disputed rather forcefully like why you train every day. I already told you. For developing your quirk so you can be a proper hero she droned yeah I know but why are you trying so hard? You never told me that. Why do you think you have to try so hard to become a hero? Why do you do it? What drives you every morning to get up and do drills? Develop your quirk and learn how to fight. She pressed backing him into a wall where she used her arms to box him in. I. I. He swallowed nervously, now noticing the height difference between them. Toga didn't seem to care as she continued you told me you want to go to Yui, but I'm pretty sure no one else is trying this hard to do it. Just what are you trying to prove Izuku Midoriya? Izuku stared, his previous embarrassment forgotten. He stared at her but he wasn't staring at her. Look, you made him cry. I I won't let you hurt him anymore. You playing at Hero Deku. You don't even have a quirk. He looked down. Izuku. She couldn't see it but his eyes clenched shut. Show yourself D.E.K.U. Get out here so I can kill you. Lights out. His eyes snapped open and he drew in a ragged breath. Izuku. Huh. He looked up. Himiko was no longer close but at some point backed up and with good reason ah. Spikes of dark had coalesced around him and jutted outwards I'm sorry the darkness faded away. It's okay she said a little guiltily I shouldn't have pried. No I. He paused and looked at his hands it wasn't always like this you know. HM. My quirk. It dot 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 it didn't come to me as easily as it did everyone else. I never even realized I even had quirk. No one did so before I found out everyone called me quirkless or useless Deku because I was always weak and couldn't do anything right he chuckled bitterly actually they still do. Himiko frowned Izuku. Kaken was the one who gave me that name he interrupted. I know him, wasn't he your friend? Yeah. He was he smiled sadly we both wanted to be heroes like All Might. We were practically inseparable. Then he got his quirk, I didn't and suddenly he was the center of attention, getting praises and suddenly having a lot more friends. I never really cared much for his quirk. Not really, I admired him way before he ever got his quirk. You admire him? I still do he chuckled derisively he always strived to be the best. He never let anyone get in his way and he had a lot of passion, especially towards his goal. I want to be just like All Might but Cat Kakin he wanted to surpass All Might as a hero. I think I was the only one he knew that saw him for more than his flashy quirk. He was just a boy to me, a friend not some wonder boy. I knew that. He knew that and because I didn't see him as this unbeatable, insurmountable thing he started. I don't know, see me as a threat he took a long pause as if he was thinking of his next words. Yeah Izuku said nodding as if confirming I think. He didn't really know how to deal with someone who just thought of him as a normal person so he did what he always did with things that bothered him. He lashed out in the worst ways. He bullied me, belittled me, called me names, anything to make me feel inferior to him and he did it without seemingly any regard for my health. Bastard was the first thing that came to Himiko's mind and Ko Obasan told me that they went through a rough patch this is a lot more than just. I guess I shouldn't have expected any better he continued it's just like Kaken to respond physically to anything he thought of as a threat. I didn't get it back then but I had a lot of time to think about it ever since I moved here. Mom told you about the fight we had that made us move here right? Yeah she said they had a little fight and she thought it would be best to give them some space. Seeing that Inko was a worry ward Himiko didn't think much of her decision but now. You see at the time I was still developing my quirk and it affected my brain chemistry. So I was down, sad, angry, agitated and I didn't know why. Then Kaken being Kaken started to pick on me and that made me feel even worse so I threw the first punch. Himiko's eyebrows shot up. No doubt the bastard deserved it but to think Izuku was the one to hit first was dot 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 well if she was honest. The thought was very appealing. Then he retaliated with his quirk, so I found the storage shed locked the door and turned off the lights so I could make it an even playing field. The only reason why Himiko wasn't grinning at the thought right now was how Izuku looked. He was ashamed, devastated and sad at the same time. His sad green eyes devoid of any of his usual cheer made her stomach churn. I was telling the truth about why I dedicate every single day to bettering and understanding myself and my quirk himiko -san. Because the last time I didn't just lose my senses, my mother's peace of mind and my home. I lost my friend and I have nothing to show for it except this he lifted his shirt to show her a large burn scar across his torso and pulled it back down when her mouth dropped in a silent gasp. I'm sorry I shouldn't have asked. He raised his hand and she remained silent as he gave her a sad smile it's alright he looked around as this far enough. Yeah, I'll see you tomorrow Himiko. Dot 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 you too Izuku was all she could say to retreating back. 
With her mood now thoroughly down a dejected Himiko Toga walked the streets alone and the day started so great too she thought then stop. Izuku had his head down mentally trying to calm his thoughts but to no avail but it was something to be expected especially since he opened the floodgates of emotion he had cut off in pursuit of training. With that thought it's going to be a while before he could find something to distract his mind from the emotional torment. Izuku, HM. He turned and was almost tackled off his feet but luckily managed to plant his footing as his hands reflexively came up to hold whatever hit him still. And that something happens to be H. Himiko saw off. His shout of surprise was muffled by something soft and when she pulled back Himiko had Cheshire-like grin on her face. At that point Izuku was in a suspension of disbelief so badly that he didn't even realize what happened until she said the ten words that would forever change his current life onwards. I like you Izuku, will you go out with me? Dot 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 as far as distractions for the heart go. This is about as good as you'll get. Meanwhile, show yourself D.E.K.U. Get out here so I can kill you. He turned to see the boy next to the switch. Lights out. Gah he snapped up. His breath came up in pants. Sweat dropped down his body and red eyes darted around frantically for a moment before they settled down. Shit. He flopped back down on his bed as the memories of that day resurfaced. The thoughts only caused him to growl in a mixture of anger and annoyance. Damn you, fucking Deku. Lights out. That damn dream again. Lights out. Of all the things Katsuki Bakugu remembered from that day, it wasn't the hits or the cuts. Lights out. It wasn't the pain or even the humiliation. Lights out. It was those words. Lights out. Two simple words that wouldn't have meant much, especially from Deku of all people, but it did. It was the very last words that were said by his former friend to him before he went away but not before throwing Katsuki's entire life into disarray and dealing a major blow to both his body and mind. Katsuki literally had the scars to prove it but what really cut deep and continued to cause him anguish was the blow to his ego. Deku. No Izuku Midori unknown to anyone had in fact beaten him. That day, he tried not to remember but he could never forget the greatest fight in his young life against a former friend he thought was useless. A fight that, in the end, he had lost. At first he was in denial, his brain purposefully protecting his pride by conveniently forgetting the last few moments before he passed out. He didn't remember it until a year later when he and his two minions were talking about an interview with All Might and how hard it was when he fought his first villain, way back when he was just a fresh graduate from Yui Academy. That made Katsuki think how his first fight with a villain would go. Then it veered into his first real fight and eventually he got to thinking of his fight with Deku and at that point the memory, the pain, the humiliation wasn't so fresh. It was buried under more praises from his peers. Ridicule of the useless Deku who ran away after getting beaten up and disappointment from his parents and teachers on how he picked on the poor boy. It made him annoyed remembering the lecture and a very idle thought pass him by wonder what those idiots would think if Deku was the one who beat me up. It was a stray thought meant as a joke of a joke but that was the catalyst for a suppressed memory to be dredged up and then he remembered. Annoyance turned to disbelief then denial and so much cursing but the memory took root and it haunted him for the better part of the same week. That's when the nightmare started. All of them involving those two accursed words that if used in conjunction would set him off faster than a bomb triggered by a dead man's switch. The worst part of it was that the object of his ire wasn't there so he couldn't very well do anything about it. So he was left to stew in his own defeat at the hands of useless Deku which he didn't handle well. That week saw him more agitated, angry as hell and easily provoked than he'd ever been. It was as if he was subconsciously gearing to prove his superiority at every turn. Talk to him a certain way. Give him a certain look. Make certain movements. Anything that could be perceived as challenging his might was met with a swift, brutal and very physical response. And you better believe no one was safe. Not his friends. Not his followers. Not even his teachers and especially his parents whom have put up with his attitude. Whether through his father's passive behavior or his mother's biting tongue and lack of fear for reprisals. Then he challenged the latter's authority by hitting back. That was, in hindsight, the worst mistake of his life as Katsuki was reminded why he let his mom get away with hitting him, the same reason why she lets him get away with cursing like a drunken sailor and calling her names. She doesn't step out of line but he did and after she was done with him, Katsuki thought less of his loss against Deku which was close as he now compared it to his loss against his mother. The months following were the moments where Katsuki turned inward. He was still the mean, cocky bastard with an attitude on the outside but he responded less with others now, especially when they praised him. The words of encouragement, the compliments, all of it was hollow and meaningless to him. Well he'd received them so much that they did lose meaning a long time ago but in the face of his loss against Deku they were more akin to pity. Then he did something he'd never done before and started to think, like really think about his goal and about his fight. It didn't take him long to figure that if he wanted to be the best then he would have to beat Deku. Should those ever be uttered then he would either be a laughing stock or be congratulated for the funniest joke of the year. So for a while he remained quiet and through his introspection he started thinking more about the boy known as Midoriya Izuku. 
He's under no illusion that Deku didn't actually want or rather he did not plan to fight him that day. Really it was Katsuki's fault for pushing him but can you blame him? Deku never fought back and once upon a time when he did, he was too pathetic to do much. So how did he manage to win? Simple, Deku was, as much as it pained him to admit, smarter than him. It reflected in his grades and though no one gave him any credit for it Katsuki actually respected him a little because of it. He could acknowledge that much. He knew what Deku wrote in his little black notebook too. Or at least from the few times he got a glimpse at it. They were ideas, musings, plans or what have you, of different quirks, their strengths, weaknesses, possible counters and so on. Katsuki has no doubt that somewhere Deku kept a profile of him. After all the times he's used his quirk against him, who wouldn't in his situation? Also Deku is the only one who knew him as a person, as a friend. It took longer to admit but Katsuki realized that of all the persons he knew Deku was the one he most perceived as a threat and it showed in his fight. He won't even go into his quirk or whatever the hell that was inside the storage shed. Izuku had him dead to rights and he suspected that the only reason why the guy passed out too was due to lack of stamina. Deku was just weak like that. So what did he learn from his introspection of the whole ordeal? Deku is a crafty son of a bitch who used his perceived weakness to lure him into a false sense of security, lead him into an obvious trap and proceeded to concoct a plan which he crudely executed. The worst part of it was that it was on the fly, completely unexpected and Katsuki fell for it beautifully. Now Deku was gone, having stripped him of his belief as being the best and the chance to rectify it by challenging him again. Of course he could seek him out but his parents aren't in as much contact with Inko anymore and even if they were they wouldn't tell him their address which leaves Katsuki by himself. Now what was he supposed to do? Katsuki thought of it for a while. Now that Deku, the only person who he had perceived as a threat was no longer there, he had nothing to challenge him anymore. The indignity of his loss aside Katsuki felt a sense of emptiness. What should he do now other than sit back and wait? The answer was so simple and yet it came to him during a conversation with his mother at a time where he was simply lost on what to do with himself. Predictably his mother was all over his lazy ass, complaining about his lack of productivity. And through her tirade the only thing that registered was his name. What did you just say? Mitsuki cut her tirade short when she got a reaction that was not him yelling as loud as she did. She didn't let it get to her too much though I said why can't you be more like Izuku? He shot to his feet what about Deku? Mitsuki's eyes widened at the fire in his eyes and she smirked I've been talking to his mother lately. While you're here sitting on your lazy ass he's out exercising very day. Even practicing with his quirk. The anger melted into open mouth shock as his mind raced he's been thighs entire. A-A-A-R-G-H. The scream caught Mitsuki off guard as did when he bolted through the door Katsuki. Her yell fell on deaf ears as the only thing he could hear was the sound of his mind and thumping hard as he continued running. He knew not the destination but he just kept running. He's been training. This entire time Deku has been training. That fucker. Of course he has. When he acknowledged Izuku was the only one to know him as a friend the same went in reverse. Katsuki had Deku pegged as well and when he thought about things, it only made sense. That guy, most of his life had been spent adoring heroes. Hell they both wanted to be like heroes and when he finally caught a glimpse of his quirk he worked damn hard to make it happen. So why in the hell would he think Izuku motherfucking Midoriya would sit on his ass and do nothing until it was time to enroll in Yui? Shit. He slammed an explosive fist into a wall causing it to explode outwards but he didn't care. What the hell have I been doing? He could care less that his mother favored Izuku over him but to say that the scrawny bastard had been training all this time. He's getting stronger and I'm still he trailed as his anger was expressed in another explosion. After venting his anger and stress he resolved to do something about it. He was going to be number one but before that could happen he needed to beat Deku and as he is. Right now, Katsuki had his doubt that if he were to fight the scrawny puke now then it wouldn't be an easy win and with each day the gap gets wider. In Katsuki's mind it was inconceivable for him to lose as he is but he's thinking of Izuku as he was and as of now he could only imagine how strong he is now. Exercising every day. He'll do one better than that bastard. Everything that Izuku does he'll do twice as much. He'll surpass him and be the best. But to do that, as much as he hated it, he would need to at least have a grasp of what Izuku was doing. As appealing as it sounds to just work till he dropped in hopes that he was doing more than Izuku thus becomes stronger than him, Katsuki wasn't stupid. Brash, arrogant, foul-mouthed but not stupid and overworking himself till he collapsed was just insane. This wasn't an anime. Basic yet extreme strength training won't guarantee godlike strength and invincibility. If it's one thing his loss against Deku did it was teaching him that going into a fight without a plan beyond blow shit up and hope for the best doesn't cut it, not with a guy like Deku and he knew Deku. No he'll have to be crafty about it and what better way to be crafty than to counter everything Deku has. And the first step is to know how the bastard was going about training himself and his quirk and work to create contingencies. The problem was that he'll have to bargain with the devil. What? 
From her lounging position on the couch and magazine on her chest Mitsuki gave her son a surprised look. Katsuki was rather annoyed by that what you going senile you old Hanji A.H. He rubbed his face with a wince but glared at her. Familiar red eyes glared back I heard what you said. Idiot. She then continued calmer I just wanna know why you want to know what Izuku is up to. None of your business. Well tough shit. I ain't telling you nothing until I get an answer and don't even bother asking your father either. He doesn't care to know what me and my friends are up to. Shit. She had him and he knew it but he wasn't about to cave forget it. Mitsuki simply shrugged sweet yourself. Katsuki decided to wing it in the end lots of running. Push-ups, sit-ups and drinking plenty of juice. Days turned into weeks turned into months and the entire time he'd hear himself asking the same question. What would Deku do? How would he go about getting this done? If the name of the game is Beat Deku then it only makes sense that he'd want to know how the guy thought. Admittedly it was the most Katsuki had ever had to think about something and it pissed him off that he had to stoop so low as to think like someone else. But you know what pissed him off even more? Losing. So in the end he sucked it up and thought long about it. Well he knew that Izuku knew that he wouldn't let his loss stand. He shook his head no if I know him he wouldn't even think he won that fight he thought remembering how his former friend looked that day. That wasn't the eyes of someone who got into an unplanned fight with Katsuki Bakugou and won by the skin of his teeth. But that thought he figured Izuku wasn't training to beat him specifically, probably. It was a small comfort at least, still didn't mean shit since Deku probably had enough notes on him and his quirk. But that thought he needed to go beyond Deku's expectations and develop countermeasures against his countermeasures which would mean quirk training i.e. special moves. He grinned at the thought of blasting the nerd with an awesome move but before he could develop the special move, he'd need to study what he was up against. Which brought up the second hardest part of his Deku investigation. What the hell is his quirk? The first time he saw Deku's quirk, it was a literal flash of light. Then he heard it was that he could absorb sunlight like some kind of solar battery and release it. A few years later he could allegedly make his palms glow. Then fast forward to D-Day and dot 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 that happened. Seriously what the fuck? What the actual fuck? That. What happened in the storage room was not a light-based quirk. The shit that he'd seen when he actually lit the place up with explosions. Shudder. Fuck he grabbed his head in frustration. Bad enough that he lost his first real fight. To make it worse it was against Deku of all people and to add insult to injury he was fucking traumatized by it. No he shook his head. It wasn't just pride on the line anymore. He needed to mop the floor with Deku, for his pride and his damn health. Stupid brain. So it was with that Katsuki found himself around a computer searching for quirks revolving around manipulating darkness or as the technical term goes umbrakinesis. The search brought up some data although there wasn't much on the account that that specific type of quirk was rare. Plus people with that type of quirk more than not end up as villains because dark quirks make people dark. Shit that wasn't even a stereotype but an actual scientifically proven fact. The type of energy that is generated by darkness affects the brain chemistry in such a way that it brings to surface certain negative emotions, change in demeanor and in some cases just pure insanity. That made Katsuki pause well shit. No wonder Deku sucker punched me. It also explained why most of the quirk users were villains. Now that opened a kin of worms to another impossible yet plausible question that popped up in his head. Is Deku's quirk going to turn him into a villain? If it was enough to make him do all that then could it, somewhere down the line, transform that useless bastard into a seriously dangerous villain? PFFT yeah right. He had to scoff at he thought. Not even going into how ludicrous it sounded for Deku to be a villain of all things. Katsuki himself couldn't imagine Deku would ever think to be a villain. Just look at Katsuki. With his quirk and attitude he's as close to being a villain to anyone who would skim his profile. For fuck's sake he already has minions though he didn't hang around them for long. Back to the point. Deku wouldn't be a villain, at least if he were left to his own devices, dark powers or not. If Katsuki could be a hero then you better believe Deku can as well and without Katsuki to keep him in check then there is literally nothing holding the guy back from pursuing that dream, dark quirk be damned. Speaking of quirk, while on the topic of quirks Katsuki felt that he still hadn't grasped Deku's quirk, not fully at least, though he had enough memories and evidence for his dark powers but still, if that was all then what's with that light shit then? Naturally Google was his only friend and when he typed in light explosion and dark control, his views on quirk expanded as the search engine showed something peculiar that surprised him. Dual quirks. In all honesty Katsuki didn't even think that was a thing. Oh he knew it existed, having more than one ability in a single quirk, it is usually found in mutant type quirks, or it could be a side effect of a quirk, like in his case, because his explosion quirk is just as lethal to him as it can be for others his body compensates by developing thicker skin. Katsuki will in theory have very durable skin especially around his palms. But the actual definition of dual quirks what Katsuki found told a different story from what Katsuki was aware of, having two quirks manifest that aren't inherently similar to each other. These were the rarest of the rare type of things, so rare that the number of documented cases could be counted on one hand. 
there was the fairly known ability to turn invisible and generate force field. He remembered that heroine very well from the so-called Silver Age of Quirked Heroes. Then there was that one villain who had super speed and could generate fire. That guy is incarcerated at the moment. Finally there was a recent guy who could do zero point manipulation and aggressive regeneration. Katsuki wouldn't lie. Having one of those powers could make someone dangerous but having two of them and they are almost unstoppable. That aside it still frustrated him because there was so little examples of them that it wasn't likely he would find what he was looking for and he wasn't about to go read up on the many theories so-called experts have come up with. Then he thought fuck it, might as well try and looked up dark and light quirks. What came up aside from some sites was the caption did you mean light versus dark? More than a little intrigued he clicked on it and the first thing that generated of all things was an article based on a book. Light versus dark, the tragedy of the Reynolds family. This got an eyebrow raised at the familiarity of it. The name Reynolds sounded familiar. Out of curiosity he clicked on the article. By the time he finished reading it he leaned back in his chair and muttered holy shit. The article was an overview of the book was based on true events, mostly journal notes, eyewitness accounts, public records everything in the book was authenticated and extensively researched, documented and proven. The book is a biography of one Robert and Ryan Reynolds act of the Reynolds brothers or their more famous aliases, The Sentry and The Void. Now those names Katsuki recognized. Oh there is not an aspiring hero or villain who wouldn't recognize those names. Arguably the first humans in recorded history to have developed quirks and the very first hero and villain respectively. Everything that is now started with those two. Their actions shaped the foundations for other quirk users and for better or worse their ideals still held firm. Or at least that's what one analyst said. Katsuki was less interested in the history and more in their quirks. When Robert Reynolds was born his body shined in a golden light so bright that the hospital lights wouldn't compare. Of course this made the papers as a sign from the heavens. On the contrary his brother was born soon after completely normal. Later on in their life Robert's quirk would evolve from glowing brightly to manipulating and generating light while Ryan would be able to do the opposite and control and generate darkness in all its forms. By themselves those quirks were some of the rarest and the two brothers cemented themselves as the most powerful hero and villain in history with the feats they pulled off during their respective careers thanks mostly to those quirks. And now there's a very good chance that Deku has both of those quirks under his control. Again, what the actual fuck? Katsuki was in a state of disbelief that the most useless and weak guy he knew ended up like that. At the same time he felt reinvigorated. Oh sure he acknowledged that the Reynolds twins were insanely powerful with their quirks but strip away all that and what's left is Deku and while the guy is crafty he makes for a far less imposing face than those two legends. He gulped I'm going to surpass All Might and that means I'll surpass you too he pointed at the picture of the sentry. A lofty goal with almost no chance of being accomplished but as the saying goes dream big or don't dream at all. For the rest of the year Katsuki worked on quirk development, researching extensively on his fitness and quirk techniques, even going so far as to draw inspiration from heroes with similar quirks. And through blood, sweat and sheer fucking will he develop several new techniques that would definitely blow Deku's expectations out of the water. Because that's what it's all about. Deku would be expecting the Katsuki he left behind but unlike him Katsuki was expecting the unexpected. Deku would never catch him flat-footed again and he worked twice as hard as he had any business to. His parents approved of his new ethic and he would be lying if he said he didn't value their praises above others. Not to say that even if the incident didn't happen he would have just lazed around doing nothing for three years. Fuck no. Katsuki actually had it all planned out. Exercising, quirk and combat training then some studying to top it all off. Katsuki is deathly serious about being the best and will quite literally destroy anyone who stands in the way of that. Really the only thing that's changed in that regard is the amount of load he placed on himself and of course his new immediate focus defeating Deku. Add all of that together and Katsuki was actually ahead of schedule. Making progress he thought he'd only see himself making a new Wii right now. He wouldn't be surprised if he could fight against some villains and come out on top. He wouldn't though. Contrary to popular belief Katsuki is very much a realist but with possibly the best damn poker face in the world. After all who's going to take the loud mouth? Short-tempered brat serious when he's always talking big. Aside from that Katsuki doesn't have any formal combat training let alone combat experience and by combat he's talking about the kind that wasn't ended by spamming his quirk like a broken special move in a video game. Now that he thought about it he hasn't gotten into a fight that didn't end with him simply blowing his opponent up since Deku. He didn't know whether that said something about Deku or how far he's come or the peasants who even bother try but it's very sad indeed when someone says that Deku put up more of a fight than anyone before or since. Anyway his lack of combat training was going to be taken care of by someone of a specialist before. Katsuki would have learned the basic self-defense course for aspiring adolescents wanting to become heroes. They actually have that and though his parents weren't wealthy they did have a savings put away for all of Katsuki's future hero needs so paying for the class wasn't a problem. 
At least it wasn't before but after taking and subsequently acing that class Katsuki was still left unsatisfied. Sure he learned a lot of basic combat moves but they were just that, basic and he would more than likely have to rely on his quirk plus additional training at Yui. It seemed that the class itself was more for getting used to actually being in combat situations and not lock up than for practicality. It pissed him off and he complained very loudly and incessantly about it which did let him blow off some steam but still left him with a problem. He needed training, combat training, martial arts training. That last one came up from the back of his mind when he was going through his father's DVD collection on one of the more boring days. For a pussy his father liked his action movies, but it didn't really stuck until he got wind from his mother that Deku was on the hunt for dojos. The look on his mother's face when she let that one slip wanted him to do unspeakable things but he let it go in favor of mulling over the new information. Katsuki knew for a fact that Deku wouldn't be finding any dojos and he knew that Inko wouldn't be able to afford a private instructor. What really had him was that the guy would even think of that. Then there's the other information of a friend helping him practice. Deku got himself a training partner shit. As much as Katsuki was content training by himself he could recognize the benefits of having a sparring partner as opposed to being alone. Deku is humble and open enough to have included a like-minded person in his training but not Katsuki. First of all he didn't acknowledge anyone in his class in the school to be near enough to his level to allow such a thing. Even if he did then they would have to be able to keep up with his kind of training, bear with his attitude and be tough enough to withstand him. That lowers Katsuki prospects to a partner to be a strong and stubbornly persistent person who is invulnerable to explosions and insults. So in short, a crazy motherfucker and Katsuki don't deal with crazies. As for the dojo bit Katsuki knew that after quirks became widespread, such things like martial arts and self-defense became outdated in the face of having superpowers. Only the wealthier ones managed to maintain their standing but only in the form of private tutoring where they teach their styles in coalition with someone's quirk. In most cases a reputable dojo would contract with an organization to teach its members their art. Katsuki knows for a fact that China's hero school did this, not just as a lucrative business but it's also encouraged by the government in order to preserve a piece of their culture. It's a wonder why China has one of the lowest villain sightings in the world, to the point where their heroes actually migrate. Japan's government tried to do something similar. But by the time it was implemented most of the dojos had already shut down. That and the people just weren't interested in the martial arts anymore despite the boon it would give to its heroes. It shouldn't have been that much of a problem but the downside is that it's more expensive especially if it's to be done by a private citizen as opposed to sponsored ones. That's what he managed to find out after some research just to get a better understanding of Deku's prospects. With that said Katsuki wasn't interested in martial arts per se and by that he meant like the ones in movies, you know, flips, kicks, throws, chops and all that. As tempting and aesthetic as being like Jackie Chan would be he's smart enough to know his quirk and fighting style wouldn't mesh with that type of fancy fighting. Oh no he knew which martial art he should use to best maximize his particular set of skills and lucky for him this one isn't extinct or specialized. The moment he entered through the door Katsuki could tell he walked into the right place. Exercising equipment of all types were in a designated area. Mats and lots of punching bags of different types were also present but at the center of the area was a boxing ring. Katsuki couldn't help it. He grinned at seeing two men duke it out in a no-quirks brawl. Now this is what I'm talking about. With the rise of quirks certain sports began to lose their appeal to the general public. It's the reason why the Olympics eventually became defunct and replaced with quirk-centered events hosted by major hero schools or organizations around the world which include Yui of course. The only sports to survive this were mostly contact sports that could be adapted with quirks and of course have an audience that watch for more than just entertainment boxing as all of that and while it isn't as popular as it once was it has adapted into this modern day society. Out of everything Katsuki couldn't see Deku doing boxing. It's one of those few things that doesn't take quirks into consideration at first glance, especially projection-type quirks. That would mean Katsuki's quirk wouldn't matter here. No one would sing him meaningless praises at this place. That was all right though. He was big enough to do boxing probably even go pro if he wanted but he'll go as far as he can until Yui or graduation. For now though he will focus on the task at hand hey old man, you looking for a new member. A semester and two months into his second year passed since he joined the local gym, turns out Katsuki was a prodigy at the sport. Hell he's even fought in some matches, three in fact, against older more experienced boxers and won all of them with a knockout. Aside from his accomplishments in the ring he managed to implement the sport into his combat style which was still in the experimenting stage but looking very good nonetheless. He even managed to get the hang of a few special moves and it would only get better from here on out. With true accomplishments and growing progress Katsuki's future was looking brighter as did the prospect of his goal. Nothing could bring him down now. Katsuki. Apparently he has spoken too soon. Why do you want ya old granny? He yelled back. Shut up. 
That was expected but her bypassing him wasn't. It said something about his relationship with their relationship that he knew something was wrong when she didn't hit him after he insulted her age. With the way how his mother looked he was the last thing on her mind. What the hell is going on? His voice was naturally harsh, but lost most of its bite. He was curious. Her mother threw on a coat and grabbed her car keys. There was a villain attack, and Ko and Izuku are in the hospital. Katsuki's normally hot blood froze at the news and he raced out the door behind his mother all the while his mind tried to wrap itself around the situation then swearing bloody murder against the shit-stained villain who'd attack in Ko. And Deku if he failed to protect her. Yellow eyes watched with rapt attention mixed with awe at the spectacle before them. Sitting on the tatami mat with legs folded so as to not appear indecent Himiko watched the two figures dance in a complex series of punches, kicks, palm strikes, blocks, evasion, redirection and all manner of other techniques she had really only seen in kung fu movies. As expected Izuku gives his all with everything, whether it's mastering his quirk, studying heroics, training for combat or even a simple date Izuku tries to give 110%. When she said combat experience this wasn't what she meant but only Izuku could take learn self-defense and turn it into become a kung fu master. Speaking of, looks like the spar is about to end. Spar would be too kind of a word though this was more like a brutal practical lesson. For a kindly looking old man Silver was old school with the lessons, like really old school. At a certain point in a disciple's training they would have an evaluation and since Izuku was the only student the teacher took it upon himself to personally evaluate the boy. Dot 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 by having a spar that incorporates everything he's learned these past several months and brutally exploiting any flaws or weaknesses while giving harsh commentary. Nice evasion. With a front kick which Bang easily blocked Izuku gained some distance before settling into a stance, one which Silver cop it. She should be protesting this but not fast enough. This time he won on the offensive and he only managed to get a single fist out before it was deflected. A moment later a kick hit the back of his knee forcing him into a half-kneeling position with a single leg. That same leg came up and smacked him in the side of the face gh, forcing him to stumble back again and somehow managed to block a third side kick before getting hit on the shoulder oh. She has a vested interest in Izuku being hurt. Your stance is too stiff silver kicked his shin from under him causing the boy to fall. He used the momentum to do a roundhouse kick which missed its mark by a mile sloppy and before he could even properly stand Silver delivered a chop to his chest that made him hit the tatami. Izuku tried to kip up quickly to catch him unawares but was stomped back down when Silver performed a spinning axe kick to the chest. Oof. Besides her needs, Izuku crawled away but got to his feet when Silver continued on the offensive. He managed to deflect all the well-placed strikes well done but failed to avoid the sudden leg sweep that had him falling to the ground. Someone is going to have to nurse Izuku back to health, said boy rolled away and to his feet but again went on the offensive with noticeable sluggishness. Useless Silver slapped away his hands and delivered a palm strike to his face. Izuku, who was barely even standing, actually spun from the momentum of the strike before dropping like a tree that's been cut down. And that's my cue. Izuku. She rushed over to his side with handkerchief in hand and laid his head on her lap then began wiping away the blood with a concerned expression did you have to hit him so hard old man. She said bitingly we already know you're better than him, you don't need to remind us. Silver rolled his eyes it wasn't that bad and he could heal those minor injuries in mere minutes besides he stroked his chin a little while looking at his disciple both of you shouldn't be complaining since you both get something out of it he gave her a look that conveyed his unsaid words. You get to nurse him back to health and Izuku has the privilege of being cared for by his girlfriend. Himiko clicked her teeth in annoyance tch, so he saw through me after all. At that moment Izuku must have realized the soft sensation under his head wasn't a pillow and sat up with a grown up. It's okay I learned that sensei has to hit me at least that hard or else my quirk would just revitalize me and the fight would end up getting dragged out unnecessarily, like last time. Himiko frowned and gently forced his head back to her lap well I'm sorry if I worry about you Izuku then she swooped down like a hawk and her lips caught bruised injury that just so happened to have a blood stain. When she came back up the bruise and blood was gone they're all better she smiled a bit widely now I just have to get the others. The kiss must have did more than cure his boo-boo because Izuku sprang up with a shout T that's alright Himiko. He held his hands up front while backing away slowly. This did little more than amuse the blonde whose expression took on a teasing tone ah but Izuku my way is a lot more fun. Gulp. And I'll make sure to get every spot she licked her lips in a way no minor should be able to. Dot 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 and no words could describe the white noise static that was Izuku's mind in that moment. I'll remind you too that there are no illicit behaviors allowed in my dojo silver remark dryly while walking away. Himiko looked at the man's back with irritation before looking back at Izuku except he wasn't there where. He left when you took your eyes off him. There was a breeze and Himiko's head turned to door in time to see it slam shut. Him his recovery time has increased silver noted as he stared at his watch. Himiko simply giggled into her sleeve and followed after him. 
dropped. A sigh of content escaped his lips as Izuku let the rays of the almost setting sun shine down upon his now exposed torso. He'd done it so many times that he could almost feel every moment of the gradual change of his body as it heals itself. Izuku was pretty sure he could estimate how long it would take to heal a particular damage. He plopped down onto the ground then winced. The bruises were healing but slowly especially since the sun is in its early stages of setting. Oh, Sensei really did a number on me. Well what did you expect when you told him you couldn't handle it? He jumped at the close proximity of the voice and yelped when a hand pulled him back down to the ground except instead of feeling the floorboards it was a soft cushion that Izuku recognized as Himiko's supple thighs. And soon enough the aforementioned girl came into his view. Himiko looked down with a small grin feeling better. A little he stammered relinquishing eye contact. He didn't get up though. No he found some time ago that Himiko liked skinship and giving lap pillows as much as any teenage boy would like getting one from a cute girl. And though it's sort of embarrassing Izuku couldn't deny he very much liked Himiko's lap pillows. He would have liked it better in private but that's just the kind of person his girlfriend is. Oh was it failed to mention that Himiko is officially Izuku's girlfriend? His mind pondered this as she ran her hand through his curly green tinted hair while humming. This is nice he thought. And very much needed, especially after the anxiety-induced few weeks he has been experiencing. It all started after the faithful night of Himiko's confession and his subsequent acceptance to start dating his friend. His mother had given the news that Detective Tsukachi visited her in the day and told her that Yamaha, the boy whom he mistakenly attacked was found dead in his home. Izuku later found out much later that the police found him drained of almost all his blood which was missing. That raised his paranoia through the roof and he kept his head on a swivel for days, going to school and coming back home which was inconvenient since he literally just got a girlfriend. It wasn't long until the paranoia was toned down thanks mostly to Himiko herself who worked wonders in calming him and his mother down. So he was ready to restart his training, which was about the time he hit his second speed bump. His training ground which was virtually cleared of all trash had now become a popular hangout spot for couples. On the bright side with a girlfriend now he still had a legitimate reason to hang around the place. Not that he bothered anymore. Luckily by that time he had devoted most of his time to training with Silver Fang so it was more of an inconvenience rather than a setback. However recently a string of murders have gotten him on edge. Granted it wasn't anywhere near their neighborhood but if you ask him it was too close nonetheless. Especially since his mother has to commute to and from work in that general area. At least there are more heroes patrolling the streets now. But still, what are you worrying about this time? Izuku looked at Himiko's face, a frown adorned at it's nothing. You're a terrible liar Izuku she said frankly without a hint of mirth now tell me she lowered her head, her hair falling down in a shower of golden strands. Izuku bit his lip and tried to turn away but she gently nudged his head back to look at her. He would avert his eyes but that became harder to do with how progressively close she got to take up most of his vision. By the time he finally caved their noses were touching. His eyes closed in bliss yet the nagging feeling of worry still plagued the dark recess of mine. <sighs> Goodbye Midoriya-san. The single mother responded in kind towards her co-worker having finished for the day she headed out and made her way to the bus stop. It had been a miracle she managed to find a well enough paying job after she moved from her old neighborhood. She had only managed to break even with the money she gained from selling her old house to buying another. Luckily it hadn't taken that long and she was able to receive her first paycheck in conjunction to when she had to pay utilities. It just seems like her luck has gotten better ever since she moved. After the horrible incident with her son and Katsuki she had been racked with guilt. She always suspected her son was being bullied. At one point she was convinced of it but she has a perpetual weakness to her son she would put her faith in him that he would confide to her his problems. He did not. She felt guilt at not only finding out too late but also hurt that Izuku had not told her of this so she could do something about it sooner. Later she would learn he didn't want to make her worry and Ko was shocked. Worry, worry. Inko knew she was a worry wart but that was just ridiculous and at the same time it was sad. Sad and how her nine-year-old son perceived her to be so weak that she couldn't handle a bit of worry. The fact that he would perceive her to be a worry-filled dependent person instead of a strong adult role model made her equal part sad and upset. A parent was supposed to protect her child from the dangers of the world, not the other way around. It was all her fault though. She was always like this. She let the pressure of the outside world get to her. She couldn't hide it from her son, never thought to really. Why would she ever hide her feelings? She was his mother, a responsible independent woman raising him by herself. That had to count for something right. No it does not. Not to Izuku and not so soon. He wasn't old enough to understand the concept of everyday sacrifice. The most he could tell you about self-sacrifice is the sacrifice a hero makes every day in saving the life of civilians. But not the sacrifices a modern single mother makes in raising her child. She could not blame him for his ignorance he was still a child despite his keen intellect. She hated it. Not the thought process of her son but of her own weakness perceived and actual. Inko was aware of her shortcomings. She was not a strong woman. 
Not physically or mentally but she could at least try to persevere if not for herself then for her son. Heavens no she had been through much in her life. An abusive household. A husband who abandoned her at her time of need. But everything was worth it whenever she looked on her child's face. Izuku had also been through much despite his age and for now he has become stronger for it and Inko in turn has become from that. The enthusiasm Izuku exudes on an almost daily basis in the Midoriya household is infectious. She has never seen Izuku smile so genuinely this frequently and for once it wasn't about another hero. Though the rant-like speeches he gave around dinner time about discoveries and a new quirk was all him. His accomplishments, his discoveries, how he could apply them was all him, and Ko had never been so proud. Izuku was a shoo-in for you because if the school was raising heroes and heroes inspired the public then Izuku was already one step ahead of his peers. That's right and Ko wasn't afraid to admit it if asked. Her son, her little boy was her inspiration. He inspired her to better herself in a way that she didn't think was possible for a 14-year-old. Inko was now more confident in herself, enough that she was able to swallow her self-consciousness of the past and join Izuku in his morning exercises. She could tell he held back for her which would have been a blow to her pride except she was too busy being in awe that Izuku could do this amount of rigorous training every day without fail. The thought pushed her to new grounds, which gave her a sense of accomplishment that in turn boosted her confidence. It had been a month since she started Izuku's training which also extended to a change in diet and things have been looking up for her ever since. She'd even noticed a few of her male co-workers giving her looks now which was flattering but she wasn't ready to start dating again. Not yet. Maybe in a few years when Izuku becomes a pro hero she might consider. In her musings she had arrived at home and as always she was the first. Izuku operated like clockwork and with the recent murders he had taken to arrive before sunset as per her instructions. She would expect her and Himiko back any minute now. Yet another blessing to have been bestowed on the Midoriya family. Izuku had a girlfriend. It was something she dreamed of happening but being the type of person he was she hadn't bothered to hold her breath. Then she met Himiko Toga. She was a strange one, not in a bad way more quirky than anything. And Ko could tell the girl had an infatuation with her son. The way how she would smile wider when talking about him was almost like she was swooning when she mentioned how hard he worked. Then the very next day they were a couple. Now that came out of nowhere. She had expected them to take it slow but she had come to realize that Himiko was the type of girl to take what she wants. She liked her son, then she confessed to him and there was no way Izuku could reject her and they have been together ever since. It was nice having someone else looking out for her son and even helping around the house. At least this time she could see that the girl had only good intentions and wasn't secretly doing anything nefarious behind her back. Izuku was a different kind of nervous whenever talks about their time together came up in conversation. Ah young love. By the time she entered the house the sun had already set. Izuku and Himiko would be home any minute now so she went upstairs to her room to take a bath. Even though it was routine for her at this point she paused to look around. Something felt off. It wasn't something she could visibly identify but there was something wrong here. The feeling increased the further inside she got to the point where her heart beat faster. Inko was nervous. She'd had moments like this before, particularly when she was alone. Inko Midoriya was no stranger to fear but there would always be a prevalent explanation for her feelings. Right now it just felt wrong dot 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 off. HRR. Inko jumped, almost squeaked in alarm when she heard the faint sound coming from behind the door to her room. Sweat formed on her brow, the fear reaching a fever pitch. She started retreating with her gaze still fixed to the door. Crash. Something smashed through the door and Inko froze as the seven feet tall man wearing a dark hood turned towards her. She couldn't see his face but she could feel his eyes roaming over her increasingly shivering form. For a split second their eyes meet and he grinned. Inko was greeted by jagged, disfigured teeth as the man advanced at a brisk pace. Inko didn't think for a second. The moment he twitched she ran, descending the stairs as fast as she's able towards the door. Something impaled her leg and she fell down the rest of the flight of stairs. She ended up crashing the back of her head on the wall. Her vision was blurry and her ears rang but she could make out words being spoken by the man. By the time her vision cleared she saw him making his way down at an almost leisurely pace. Her leg was bleeding and useless. She didn't care and pulled herself up beginning to limp to the door. She didn't make it two steps before something impaled her other leg and she fell flat on her face. Looking back she whimpered when she saw the instrument of her disability rip itself from her leg and back into the man's mouth. It was a tooth. He was using his teeth to attack her. Flesh dot 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 so dot 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 pretty dot 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 she heard him growl. Tears started running down her face as she made to crawl away. The path to the door not more than ten feet away seemed to stretch on for miles. Her palms were impaled next and a scream tore through her mouth. She felt several more of his teeth impale her body causing her to lose her voice. The combination of pain and unbridled fear caused her mind to slowly shut down to preserve itself. Show me more dot 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 flesh dot dot so dot 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 pretty. Inko fell unconscious in a pool of her own blood. 
Himiko and Izuku walked hand in hand with a smile their face and skip in her step at least in Himiko's case. Izuku was still recovering from the passionate makeout session Himiko instigated in the backyard of the dojo. He didn't really know how much time had passed one moment they were watching the evening sun the next thing he knew the sun had gone down and Silver was in the process of throwing them out his dojo. So it was that Himiko started to basically lead him home while he sorted his mind out. Months of dating and he still couldn't get used to some of his girlfriend's quirks but in his defense her kisses were frequent and frankly out of this world. It's now a known fact at school that he has a girlfriend which is inconvenient because a lot of people kept hassling him about it. Apparently it was against the laws of nature for a quirkless loser to have a girlfriend let alone a cute one. And they made sure to confront her on that since he's Deku then it means he must have an angle dot 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 lies. Money, blackmail etc as if he could even do any of those thing to Himiko. He went to defend himself but Himiko beat him to the punch and the looks on their faces when she was finished tearing into them verbally was something that would forever be ingrained in his memory. Priceless. Also the look on his face when she capped her award-winning speech with a deep kiss in front of the already broken boys would be something forever ingrained in their memory. Also priceless. At least for a while anyway. Izuku wasn't afraid to demonstrate the fruits of his training if the need arises, which thankfully didn't. The one silver lining about this school compared to his last was the zero-tolerance policy it held when it comes to quirk abuse and bullying. They tried to get him outside of the school in some misguided revenge plot but that plan went south when Himiko gave them the look. Even Izuku was scared of the look and why shouldn't he? Himiko can be scary when she wants to be. Speaking of Izuku had noticed the gradual slowdown of their trek the closer they came towards the house. Then they stopped as Himiko took the time to observe the building. All the lights were on, nothing seemed out of place but Himiko still looked suspicious. Himiko, something's wrong her eyes narrowed as she approached. Something stinks she thought actually smelling the air lightly light. Without another word she ran the rest of the way with Izuku following close behind Himiko what's wrong. She didn't answer and instead opening the door, both teens froze at the sight that greeted them. And Ko Midoriya laid sprawled on the ground with her eyes closed. A hooded man in dark clothes hovered over her. His long, jagged disfigured teeth were covered in blood. Izuku froze in shock and fear as the man regarded them. Himiko on the other hand acted immediately. Her expression blank she leapt across the room and landed a flying kick across his face. He flew with the force of her impact and Himiko landed Izuku get her out of here. She shouted reaching for her thighs only to curse as her box cutter was not there. It hasn't been for weeks now. Her eyes drifted to the kitchen where she knew the cutlery was located before cartwheeling away from a string of teeth that seemed to follow her. Don't get in my way. I want to see her innards. The man shouted. Himiko ignored his crazed outburst and made her to the kitchen only to be barred by a several rows of teeth that sprouted jagged spikes in her direction. Himiko back flipped away though she got nicked on her arm and chest. The wounds were superficial though so she paid them no mind as she now had another problem. The man isn't as stupid as she thought. Damn it, I'm no good without a weapon she cursed leaping back only to hit a wall. With trepidation she realized the man had her covered on all sides. A bead of sweat rolled down her face as she saw the crazed look of manic glee and hunger in the man's eyes. Let me see your insides he drooled and the teeth surrounding her speared forward. Not a moment later they were all smashed apart by a giant black tentacle that swept the room and coiled around the man. Himiko's shocked gaze instantly turned towards Izuku and she gasped. The very air around him was warping, twisting in black like a stain on white. His eyes were a dulled black green. I Izuku. Himiko felt a shiver go down her spine when their eyes met. Then he looked down at the motionless Inko before uttering two words that had her suppress another shudder. Take her. Then all hell broke loose. The lights were the first to go. The bulbs within the vicinity spontaneously exploding in a shower of glass and sparks. The second thing to happen was for the man to retaliate or try to anyway Izuku pulled him close and with a giant fist made of shadow punched him through the room. Izuku followed after him deeper in the house in a concentrated swirl of darkness that seemed to swallow the lights as he glided towards the maniac. Himiko didn't think twice. She went to Inko's side ignoring the sounds of battle to check on the woman's injuries. Shit, he severed an artery in her leg. That seemed to be the source of most of the blood on the floor but it wasn't the only one. There was a large cut on her back near her spine that looked to have been carved out. I want to see her innards. The words echoed in her mind and she scowled that bastard. She wanted to kill him. She wanted to stab him with a butcher knife so many times not even for the blood, just to see the light leave his eyes. There was a louder crash and Himiko left Inko for a moment to see that both Izuku and the maniac were gone. She could faintly hear sounds of conflict outside. Taking a deep breath Himiko forced herself not to pursue Izuku can take care of himself. She went for the phone but hesitated upon picking it up. Himiko had an abhorrence for police but a quick glance to the dying woman on the floor made her change her mind. Meanwhile Izuku felt like a third wheel inside his own body. 
The moment he saw his mother face down in a puddle of blood something in him snapped. It all went downhill from there. His mind became semi-lucid, darkness creeped at the edge of his vision yet his body moved of its own volition. The sensation was jarring. Izuku had control yet he didn't feel in control of himself. It was like he was playing a video game character of himself. The only thing he could do was guide his body into doing certain actions and hope it gets carried out. They do in a way but it's usually hit and miss and not in the way he had hoped. The only thing that does seem to register as the prime objective and side objective for him in this game called life were the following. Defeat the villain. Avoid the light. And Dark Izuku seemed to carry out these objectives with brutal efficiency. That's the thing about not being fully in control Izuku wasn't nearly as good as he could be in this situation since his brain's orders seemed to pass through a muddled filter. All the training he did with Silver was rendered moot. His brilliant mind had been muted and any plans he might have had were effectively thrown out the window. On the other hand the man, though obviously insane was a good fighter. He easily had Izuku beaten speed and maneuverability while Izuku had more raw power. But without proper coordination he was at a disadvantage. Izuku was knocked to the ground where he rolled away from being skewered and thrust his palm out sending a thick shadow tendril the man moved away from at the cost of some of his teeth formation. He seemed unperturbed though as the broken off teeth seemed to grow back and attack with a vengeance. He leapt away using the shadow to propel himself from the onslaught before he got caught in luminance of a street light. Ah, uh, he hissed in a moment as his power weakened. The moment of weakness was all the man needed to get him. Izuku made a wall of shadow but it hardly made a difference. The teeth speared through his barrier and pierced through his shoulder and leg, he screamed out in pain. A tentacle smashed the lights out and coiled around the offending object. Like ink it traveled until it ended up at the source, then without preamble slammed into his face, violently ripping out two his teeth at the root. The man yelled in pain but was coherent enough to leap aside from the follow-up. He retracted his tooth regarding the teen more warily than before. Izuku ripped the appendage from his person. His powers already cauterized the wounds, not that he needed his limbs. Using several tendrils he slowly rose, his eyes now more pitch black and staring into the soul of a maniac. Suddenly all the street's lights went out in several smashes in their vicinity encasing the area in darkness. Come again and be careful out there. The store manager warned. Thank you she greeted walking down the street. Things were a little hot right now, especially for women with the string of murders going around. Her pace was faster than normal as she made for home. She could see that the streets were empty. In fact there was an entire section devoid of light. A power outage. Weird since the entire block is powered by a single fuse box. If there was something wrong with it then she would have needed her night vision goggles to continue walking. Not that it really mattered. She wasn't even headed in that direction so whatever was happening wasn't her problem. A body was sent flying from a dark corner and crashed into a car with enough force to cave in the metal door and obliterate the windows. She froze then pressed herself to the corner when the person pushed himself to his hands and knees. Her bags were dropped the moment she saw something fly out the dark and her hands fumbled around the pocket of her cargo pants. Come on, come on. Finally she took it out. A makeshift taser gun of her own design. It could charge up enough voltage to take down someone with thick skin dot 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 I in theory. Although her theory was correct since it did take out that one guy with a brick skin quirk, mutterings from the guy caught her attention. She cringed once she got a good look at him. He was beat up real bad. His face was disfigured. Had a few teeth missing, blood was staining his clothes. She felt sorry for him dot 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 up until he noticed her looking and his eyes widened in manic glee in conjunction with his teeth. Before he could fully stand though a giant fist made of darkness smashed him back into the car earning a startled gasp from her. The appendage slithered back into the darkness and out came someone else. He was short, shorter than her, his back was hunched and he seemed to drag his feet. Not that she noticed what with his features literally being shadowed by darkness with writhing tentacles here and there. Her breathing became ragged as she backed away but that was the wrong thing to do as the walking silhouette paused its advance to the down man and slowly inclined its head in her direction. She let out a gasp at the visage of abnormally dark eyes staring at her. The streetlights flickered as its entire body turned in her direction. She held up her trembling hands pointing the gun at him. S stay back. It inclined its head at the rather toy looking gun then at the girl before reaching out its hand eye. She pressed the trigger and five barbs sprung from the mechanism onto its chest charred by 30,000 volts of pure electricity. The electricity was actually visible as it sparked off its body in arcs. Through the light show and agonizing screams that made her cringe she could see the shadow peel off of him like smoke off a fire. By the time it was finished the now-revealed young boy with unruly black-green hair was blasted back by the force where his body crashed to the ground in a boneless, smoking heap. She stayed at that position for a while trying to get her trembling under control when she heard a groan. With a click she discharged a five pairs of quadrupola batteries, hissing as the smoking material hit the ground. She had to knock one out of the cartridge as it basically melted inside. 
All the while she kept the boy's prone body in sight. She loaded up the makeshift ammunitions. Fumbling a little with the last she clicked the cartridge into place and held it up towards the boy who had now began to move. Ugh. He slowly began to shift his slightly twitching body. She could hear sirens coming from the distance and getting louder. Despite herself she couldn't help but smile at the situation she stumbled upon. She could practically see the headlines now. She wasn't stupid, a string of murders happening and she just so happens to stumble upon an attempted murder. This had headlines written all over it and with the publicity she could. Her monologue paused as the other guy woke up. She completely forgot about him. Hey guy are you okay? She questioned still keeping her eyes on Shadow Man. He didn't answer, his breathing was ragged and but she could have sworn she heard him mumble under his breath. She still didn't pay him any mind mostly because the boy was finally on his hands and knees breathing hard. He looked up with bleary eyes clearly not all there and she paused. Why does this guy look so familiar to her? After a few moments she realized no way. Midoriya San. The name seemed to jolt him into awareness as he looked to her but just as quickly his eyes darted to the side and widened in panic. Look out. She spun around aiming her supercharged taser but didn't get a chance to fire as something impaled through the gun forcing her to let go and drop back on her butt and scramble away. Looming over her was the previously thought victim, his mouth filled with deadly lengthened jagged teeth that seemed ready to stab her. He tilted his head to consider her before rows of teeth converged like a released arrow. She saw it coming in slow motion her vision zoomed into the point where she could make out the gross finer details. Then she was tackled to the side narrowly missing death but obscuring her vision as she landed on her chest. There was a grunt and a bright light followed by an explosion and shout. She was literally shaken from her terror-induced stupor as her vision returned to normal. Midoriya had a fiercely determined look yet at the same time she could see his fear. I it's going to be alright, I'm here. He was acting brave, trying to be a hero but he wasn't a pro, he was just a kid like her with no training and if the rumors were true then he was worse off than she was. His hands lit up with two glowing orbs of light that he threw at the incoming rows of teeth run away. I will hold him off. She scrambled back but didn't immediately leave you sure about that. No offense but you just took 30,000 volts to the chest he glanced at her oops. He rubbed his chest with a grimace so that's what that was he mumbled. Sorry, it's okay he cut himself off when he attacked again forcing Izuku to whip out a shadow tendril to scoop her up and another to yank them away via street light. What kind of quirk is this? She saw him throw balls of light and now he's whipping out dark tendrils no way. 30,000 volts. How am I still alive? That is by far the most his durability had been tested which was a shock. Although it explains why he's feeling pain in his chest, it was difficult but not too difficult to breathe and the constant movement wasn't doing him any favors and that was while his dark quirk was numbing most of the pain. That much power applied directly to someone's chest could stop someone's heart a couple times over, how did she even manage to get a weapon like that? She was his age. Gah. He fell short but didn't dare drop the girl and instead ducked into a dark corner making sure to kill the street light. He was really hoping the police sirens would deter the criminal while he gathered his bearings. He could still push himself but he didn't want to press his chances against a psychopathic villain while he wasn't at 100%. He kept his ear out in case they were followed but once the coast was clear he leaned against the wall and slid down with a huff. He really felt like taking a nap right now. He yelped when someone grabbed his shoulder but calmed once he came face to face with the girl he had saved. Why is he gone? Izuku swallowed I'm not sure. Stay here. Are you out of your mind? Maybe he thought but didn't deign to answer the question. Should have brought the flashbangs he heard her mumble. Flashbangs. He regarded her with a confused expression from his peripherals before they widened in shock. She turned a second later in time to see a wide open maw of razor sharp extending teeth closing in on her face. To Izuku's surprise instead of freezing up the girl did an impressive dive to the side narrowly missing the deranged man. Izuku reacted in that moment with his expression schooled in conviction he did an uppercut putting all his weight behind it and with a mighty yell of smash. A giant fist of shadow leapt from the ground and crashed under his chin, knocking out most of his teeth and knocked him into the air. In the brief rain of teeth and blood the man miraculously gained consciousness two stories up and a pair of his teeth latched onto to the two buildings. He glared hatefully at the small panting boy with blood dripping from his toothless gums you. Hinder me dot 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 and no more, die. His mouth opened impossibly wide and teeth shot out like missiles. Die. Izuku's fist balled and he cocked his fist back as a pool of shadows gather beneath his form. Plus you you The moment he let his fist fly, a shadow twice as large as his body shot from the ground temporarily obscuring his body and formed into a giant fist that easily smashed through the sharp teeth like they were styrofoam. The fist impacted the man sent him through the side of the building where it soared across the street and landed with a dull crack. For a moment he laid still then twitched. Bam! A shadow fist stomped him down where he remained unmoving and Izuku released his dark powers feeling the warmth return. Is it over? Izuku nearly jumped at the voice but was truly too tired to react much. I think so he turned to look at the girl are you alright? 
I'm fine but the girl looked him up and down you don't look so good. He didn't feel so good either. The edges of his vision were growing darker. I thought you didn't have a core hey. The remark sounded sarcastic but at that point Izuku was too far gone and he fainted. Katsuki's fingers drummed against his leg. He was anxious and just a bit scared. He hated that fact. Fear wasn't something Katsuki was accustomed to. Oh he had a taste of it in his younger years and that one isolated incident with his mother not so recently but nowadays Katsuki would usually curb stomp his fear into the ground and double tap it with an explosion to make sure it knew its place. Now the son of a bitch was back with a vengeance and this time Katsuki didn't have the means to put it down. It's not like his fear was a person or object he could fight, kill and it's not like it was internal so he could rationalize. No the worst kind of fear for someone like Katsuki Bakugo wasn't fear for himself, it was fear for someone else. Beyond those doors leading to the ICU and Ko Midoriya was in the middle of surgery. Apparently she suffered from some a few yet lethal. She lost a lot of blood, had internal bleeding and Katsuki would rather not think of the exact details. And during all this Katsuki noted that Izuku wasn't there with them in the lobby but Katsuki wasn't too worried about him oddly. That idiot was probably in another room being treated for stupidly trying to protect her from the villain. He wasn't surprised that his guess was partly right and Izuku was in fact unconscious in another room in a separate wing being treated for his injuries and exhaustion from overuse of his quirk. Katsuki didn't go to see him because he's pretty sure if he did see Deku's face he would most likely finish what that villain started. It didn't matter that Izuku not only stopped but defeated a villain, psycho, serial killer, cannibal and it didn't matter that he managed to save another civilian while he was at it. What did matter to Katsuki was that the little fucker left Inko bleeding out on the ground of his living room to do it instead of calling the cops. If Katsuki was being honest he felt disappointed and confused but mostly pissed he would do that. Just left his own mother to go be a hero to someone else. What. The. Fuck. This was all explained to him by his mother after her inquiry to the lead investigator, the would-be victim, her parents and Izuku's, girlfriend, what, the, fuck. Katsuki had no business prying into someone's romantic life but that particular revelation made the man pause and at that moment he felt the universe shift right around him. Now that conversation took place roughly an hour ago. The girl Deku saved was long gone and since Katsuki absolutely refused to see him he has been stuck waiting in the lobby. Up until a few minutes ago his mother and Deku's girl were with Deku. He said a few minutes ago because they had seemingly gotten tired of seeing his sorry ass. In reality visiting hours were about to be over and they wanted an update on Inko. Thankfully the doctor informed that she was now stable and will make a recovery, physically. Inko and Katsuki opinion was an emotional mess most of the time and is the one person they knew who was even worse than Deku. If her son getting into a dangerous fight was enough to have her move as far from the neighborhood as feasibly possible then how much worse would she be after almost getting killed? Katsuki cursed under his breath. This family was going to be death of him. It's terrible. Katsuki red gaze turned to the only other teen presumably his age. Deku's girlfriend he reminded himself then there was that feeling of how wrong that felt or maybe it was just her. Looking at the girl now, tall, blonde and fairly pretty with worry in her yellow slit like eyes Katsuki was genuinely surprised that this was that idiot's choice for a girlfriend. If one were to ask him on a very, very, very good day who he thought someone like Deku would end up with then Katsuki would probably answer he'd go for someone like his mom or someone like my mom. No, he does not have a complex with mothers or mother types it was simple psychology from what he has observed from types like Deku. The only female he was remotely comfortable with was Inko so it was reasonable to say he would seek out a meek girl who fusses over everything like her. Or if he was a glutton for punishment like his father then he would attract someone like his own mother, someone who wouldn't put up with his crap and straighten him out, though that could be 50 over 50. For some inexplicable reason in spite of his mother's attitude his father somehow had her wrapped around his finger despite being a complete pussy. He would never understand girls and at this point he didn't care to anymore. Speaking of girls, she had been staring at him for a while now and it was starting to piss him off. What are you looking at? He snapped. He gave her credit for not flinching like most would, instead she gave him an appraising look before she spoke as Ukun was right about you. The fuck is that supposed to mean? He demanded. She answered nonchalantly oh nothing she looked to the sky in a whimsical manner I should go now, places to be, someone to see with that she took on a leisurely stroll humming a tune while her hands flexed behind her back. Katsuki felt a tingle go down his spine at he last word as she departed. She wasn't normal not like a regular girl should, at least he's sure regular girls don't react the way she did towards him. Somehow Izuku had detracted from his expectations yet again. It was an insignificant thing but this girl was anything but. There was something decidedly off about the girl who claims to be Deku's girlfriend. If that is even true. Hey. She paused and looked over her shoulder curiously. Just who the hell are you anyway? He wasn't expecting her to smile at him. I'm Izukun's girlfriend of course she answered as if she was talking to a child. I want a name damn it. 
he snapped, getting more and more pissed at not being taken seriously, at being underestimated, at Himeko Toga she answered easily though with finality as if she expected that he would acknowledge her. He didn't. Katsuki spat at the side and turned his back to her obviously finished with the conversation though she wasn't apparently. Bye bye Katsuki almost rolled his eyes at the childishness in her voice Kakin Katsuki froze in place. No one absolutely no one called him that name since kindergarten. The childish nickname had been lost to the ages and frankly it felt insulting to be called such. He hadn't been a kid for a long time. The only person who he would allow to get away with it were his family and only the older ones are in co and by grudging extension once upon a time Deku. For her to call him that and in such a way that it sounded intentionally mocking was an affront to his pride. There was no question who she had learned that nickname from and he could swear he heard the little shit laughing to him now. The thought made his palms started sweating in preparation for an explosion. His expression had a nasty snarl as he whipped around ready to show her just why Deku had moved away from their old neighborhood. He wouldn't hurt her of course but he would renovate that smirk off her face for sure. Except that he didn't. Couldn't actually because Himiko Toga was nowhere in sight the second it took for him to turn around after she spoke not ten feet away from him. Katsuki's bewildered expression slowly melted away as he straightened his posture and look around. There are a number of definitively plausible reasons why she could up and disappear but Katsuki refused to dwell on them. He wasn't about to spend any more of his energy thinking about Deku or his girlfriend. And Ko was safe. The criminal was caught and Deku would live to be defeated by him another day. Everything was as it should be. The next day, the villain serial killer, dubbed Moonfish, responsible for a string of recent murders was found dead this morning in his containment cell. The inmate who was slated for death row was discovered by the escort security team with his throat and wrist slash. Sources in the coroner's office confirmed that the cause of death was severe blood loss. One of the officers on duty for the night watch was allegedly found unconscious outside the facility having apparently been knocked out with his personal effects being stolen. The television clocked off. Well Himi-chan, it looks like you've been a busy girl. The fallout after the incident with Moonfish made the local news. Of course it did Moonfish was a serial killer and cannibal two of the absolute worst things to ever come out of human society. No it wouldn't be a stretch to say that it was the absolute worst of humanity on a whole. The criminal would have been on death row if he had actually been tried and sentenced however Moonfish was killed while in detainment. That had made his name appear in headlines for at least a week but it was downplayed once it was leaked exactly how he was apprehended. The dangerous criminal Moonfish whom had managed to evade the combined efforts of the police and the heroes was beaten by a lone middle school student who came home one night to see his mother being assaulted by him. That brought the entirety of West Japan in an uproar and the media took every advantage to make their story sell and sell it did. Everyone wanted to know about the brave young boy who stood up to a villain in order to protect his mother. Full investigations into his background was launched. Interviews with anyone who has ever been in contact with him commenced, some more successful than others and ranging from truthful to downright lies. To the media it was the story of the year, to the public it was inspiring but to the few people who have ever known or at least heard of Izuku Midoriya before then. It was a shock because until then everyone had assumed he was just a quirkless nobody, a Deku. Throughout all of this though, no one had seen the boy since the incident. Reporters staked out his home, the hospital and some of the more dedicated even ran along his alleged jogging route in order to catch the boy during his workout routine. They had no such luck though. The boy never showed up and as far as they knew he was still stuck in the hospital. That was about a month ago and as the story started to lose steam everyone was still wondering. Where is Izuku Midoriya? Smack. Izuku winced as the bamboo struck his skin sensei really isn't holding back today. Silver walked around his student eyeing him as if he were judging an animal he wanted to buy as a pet and Izuku couldn't help but whimper like one when he struck his biceps. His arm trembled and he fought not to release the content of the ceramic jug he was currently gripping. It was about 6 a.m. in the morning and Silver was having Izuku squatting over a burning needle held precariously under his crotch while in each arm he gripped two heavy ceramic jugs of water. The exercise significance is threefold as not only will it improve Izuku's gripping power, the constant striking of his muscles will cause them to harden and finally he had to maintain this pose through intense concentration lest he slip up and drop the pot or his legs give up and he fell on the needle. Either of those held very terrible consequences for the young man. There was also another catch. He also had to regulate the amount of his quirk so his wound would remain. It was something Silver was recently having Izuku improve in. Honestly speaking Izuku didn't see the merit in restricting his automatic solar regeneration. Silver would have none of it though and gave him an entire lecture on the importance of having true mastery of his quirk. Think of it like this, if you can control your most basic passive ability then you will be able to fine-tune it absorb as much or as little energy as you want. The appeal of absorbing more than what he currently could did appeal to him. Instead of waiting all day in the sun he could heal himself faster and if he applied that same ultra-absorbing technique to minor injuries or even some fatal wounds then he could be virtually invincible. 
Now that made Izuku go ahead with his sensei's idea unfortunately in his thoughts of what the future might bring he momentarily forgot the pothole filled, razor wired, dirt road ahead of him to get to that point. But just as he said to himself when he laid sprawled out in various forms of exhaustion not too long ago it will all be worth it. Smack. Izuku's body trembled then stilled, his energy revitalized by his quirks passive yet forcibly restrained by his will to a degree where the angry welts were still visible. It will be worth it it will be worth it it will be worth it. Yet again his mind wandered to ignore the pain and piercing gaze of his sensei. For the rest of his break Izuku decided to move into Silver's dojo for the time being. Both to escape from the reporters and as a way to keep his mind and body preoccupied from thoughts of his mother and what could have been. Midori and Ko while alive was still hospitalized pending a full recovery, thank the gods. She had gotten medical leave with pay and her hospital bills were being covered by a mysterious benefactor known simply as SF. As if he was fooling anyone. Izuku had made sure to visit her every day mostly out of obligation and partly out of guilt. He was unconscious throughout most of it but there was a chance that she wouldn't have made it if Himiko didn't know what she was doing. This was the same thing he went through with his first encounter with a villain. He reacted without thinking and ended up mixing his priorities. Obviously he should have brought his mother to safety rather than trying to fight off the villain. A villain who would have most likely overpowered and killed him, then his mother and Himiko if he had any other quirk. It was stupid but the moment he saw his mother face down in a pool of her own blood his mind completely shut down and his dark instincts took over. Even then when he had some semblance of control did he ever think of his mother? No he simply left her in Himiko's care. Now was that neglect of his only family on his part or did he simply trust Himiko to know what she was doing? Of course he leaned to the former more than the latter since he had no idea Himiko knew basic first aid and in any other situation it would have been him leaving his mother to die in a stranger's arms. He wanted no needed to be better and it brought him great shame that he had failed his mother in that way. Not even his triumph over Moonfish had made that revelation any better and he'd heard from Himiko that even Katsuki was more concerned with his mother's health than raging over the fact that he beat a villain. He knew his friend and he knew he would definitely have a problem with how he defeated a villain before him it only seemed natural. You know you really messed up when Katsuki Bakugo remains silent in the face of someone outshining him. He never saw his friend but from the scant times Himiko had seen him it seemed that Kaken hadn't changed much and in fact it might have gotten worse if the message Himiko relayed was anything go by. Tell that useless bastard to watch himself next year. I'll knock him down from his high horse soon enough. Ah Kaken, don't ever change Izuku thought wistfully. Hey at the very least Katsuki acknowledged that he had a chance in Yui. Whether it was nervousness or excitement Izuku didn't know but he could definitely say without a shadow of a doubt he wasn't afraid of that challenge. His past bullying seemed so far away he could hardly remember them. So much has happened since. One thing is for certain though, if Kaken really was the same and was expecting for them to pick up where they left off with him being the hapless victim then he was in for a rude awakening. Smack. Oh, speaking of rude awakening dot 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 that was not Izuku's voice. Your arms were lowering Silver's impassive voice sounded from further away. Izuku couldn't help but turn his gaze to the proceeding, and hitting them with that stick is supposed to help. Himiko's irate voice sounded. Oh yes, it hadn't only been Izuku training this morning, Himiko had decided to join him as well. Her reasons were a little vague but Izuku knew that looking after his mother had struck a chord with her. If I had been stronger, he remembered her saying and he also remembered that while he froze she was the one to attack first and drove the villain off his mother. Himiko was strong, stronger and more skilled than a girl her age should be. He remembered her saying that her last trainer was a veteran soldier who was also passionate about teaching. He just didn't know how far his teachings went but now he did. As it stood Himiko was just as skilled if not even more so than himself and she took to Silver's training like a fish out of water. She also had a remarkable pain threshold which made him and Sensei wonder just what the heck kind of training she did. At this point Izuku was sure that her complaining and snide remarks were just a way to get on Silver's nerves. Maybe if you spent time concentrating on your stance instead ogling my student I wouldn't have to enforce such disciplinary actions Silver said once again blocking her view of Izuku. Said boy couldn't help but blush he was after all shirtless and in short so Silver could see his muscle development. And yes Izuku did have muscles and abs. It wasn't anything overtly noticeable but it wasn't anything to scoff at either, for someone his age at least. Himiko in true Himiko fashion had made it clear she approved of his developing physique. Likewise Izuku has also approved of the way she approves of his biceps by constantly hanging off of his arm and pressing her developing chest onto them. But that is a story for another time. What? He's a healthy young boy and Himiko is a pretty girl you can't possibly blame him for noticing something so obvious. It's not like she's hiding her apparent lust for him either. Otherwise Silver wouldn't have felt the need to place their rooms on the complete opposite ends of his dojo with the only way to get to each other's rooms is to pass by his own. 
So far Izuku has woken up to Himiko tied up to the naughty log outside 14 times. Izuku snickered a little at the memory dot 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 and got smacked in the face with a pebble for his trouble. Eyes forward Izuku silver intoned absently using the stick to juggle a significantly larger pebble. Yes sensei. Ugh. I'm beat Himiko yawn dropping her head on Izuku's shoulder. Izuku gave a nervous laugh as some eyes were on him. Luckily the boy had taken to wearing a green and black hoodie ensemble with matching black pants and green shoes. That still didn't attract that PDA attracted some gazes. If they had been older most would think it was too much but as it stood most found it adorable. They were a young couple and seeing Himiko sleepily resting her head against his while hanging on his arm like a grown-up was cute in its own way. Still Izuku preferred not to draw much attention especially on his way to visiting the hospital. It wouldn't be so bad if you didn't antagonize Sensei. HMPH she pouted all I did was tell him the truth. You called him decrepit old man who should be featured in a museum he deadpan. So, she pouted have you seen him? Izuku could only shake his head at her. She straightened up as they walked through a thrum of people while Izuku kept his gaze down. As he thought there were a few more reporters in the general vicinity, Himiko had showed him how to spot them in a crowd. It was easier than he thought. Someone must have tipped them off about his mother being released today. At her behest and Mr. SF's generous monetary backing and co wouldn't be released from the hospital until she had recovered her full mental and physical faculties. Today just so happened to be the day and while there had not been as much reporters hungry for an interview news of his mother's discharge had most likely leaked and a few eager vultures would surely want to grab an exclusive interview with her or maybe even catch him so Izuku kept his head low as he walked making sure not to give anyone a glimpse of his curly hair. That should have been the plan when someone bumped into him and suddenly his world got a little brighter. Wait what? Hey aren't you that kid who beat that villain Moonfish? As if one of those silent dog whistle was blown every person affiliated with journalism perked up and soon eyes were on him. Even then people who kept up with current events started congregating, trying to catch a glimpse of the boy hero who put the dangerous criminal behind bars. Himiko had made herself scarce before that sentence was finished. Her identity would hopefully remain anonymous to them. It was a miracle that her name hadn't gotten out there in the first place. She was instead relegated to a school friend who called the local police. Izuku abruptly had a recorder stuck in his face and a string of questions thrown at him. For a moment Izuku froze and gulped. He had seen All Might do this a hundred times on TV. How does he make it look so easy? He was so nervous the only thing that came out of his mouth was sputtering until eventually he gave up on speaking and went to his default plan. Clenching his eyes shut he formed a light grenade and thrust his fist in the air. The light from his fist magnified to the point where to shine through his fingers and then he opened his palm. Solar Sphere The flash of light outshined the sun itself for a brief moment in that contained cluster of bodies that rendered everyone momentarily blind. Even Izuku saw spots for a moment but the effect was somewhat stunted on him giving him a better recovery time and allowing him to slip away and run right into the hospital. As he ran inside the nurse at the front desk recognized him and upon seeing the reporters outside she ordered a few of the orderlies to lock the doors. Izuku breathed a sigh of relief thank you miss. The woman smiled it's no problem Izuku her gaze shifted to the now crowded door and scowled. Izuku himself winced why are there so many of them. The nurse hummed well I suppose people are still talking about what you did to Moonfish. Izuku looked at her in disbelief as he walked beside her bee but that was weeks ago. Surely something could have happened to make it old news by now. The nurse laughed clearly you don't give yourself enough credit and her expression turned just a bit serious that villain Moonfish. He wasn't just some run-of-the-mill villain either, he's defeated heroes with years of experience before. I'll say it again Izuku. It would be a miracle if anyone short of veteran heroes survived a confrontation with him but how you managed to actually defeat him is. She trailed off and shook her head I guess it doesn't matter so long as you survived. You must have one powerful quirk to pull it off. Izuku laughed nervously and gulped. He'd purposely avoided the topic of his quirk for some time now. He didn't know why he did it exactly because it's not as if he's going to get in trouble because of it. Really Izuku just didn't want the attention a quirk like his would give him, especially right now. As to the other topic of conversation Izuku had chills thinking about it, his fight with Moonfish. The nurse was right. His quirk was powerful, enough to bridge the gap between a pro villain and a semi-trained middle school kid. Add that fact to his state of mind and anyone could say that Izuku was really, very, undeniably lucky that night. It was literally a bad matchup for the villain and Izuku had also caught him off guard with a surprise attack that hindered him. If that battle had deviated from how it was even by a little then, Izuku didn't want to think about what ifs right now, they reached his mother's room. The nurse opened the door to see Inko on the bed looking as good as healed and talking to the doctor. The moment their eyes met they proved how they were truly related by shedding tears of relief and giving a simultaneous shout. Kaya chan Iziuk Yukon. While Inko couldn't exactly move from her spot Izuku practically leapt across the room to hug her. The two hospital staff watched in silence as the mother and son held onto each other and shed tears together. 
The doctor eventually had to break them up by coughing into his fist. It took about two minutes to go over Inko's current health basically she was alright and that her health was relatively fine though he cautioned for her to take it easy. He also recommended a therapist for both of them to see which was surprising, at least it was for Izuku. Inko however nodded in agreement to the suggestion. Izuku didn't voice his complaint of having some of time taken away from further developing his body and quirk. After the incident and his mother's very real near-death situation Izuku realized something upon watching her unconscious form one evening. Izuku hasn't done much with his mother in a long time. The thought hit him like a freight train. The potentially last time he would see his mother and he hadn't any lasting memories of her. She was just, always there for him, in the house whenever he needed her. A near constant in his life he figured would always be there, like an NPC in a safe house if one were to be cruel about it. The comparison made him ill but it wasn't incorrect and Izuku realized that in his quest to become a great hero he was a lousy son. What was the point of being able to save lives if the most important person in his life ended up being tossed to the wayside? Was he actually ignorant, arrogant to believe that his mother was this immortal, untouchable being that could weather through anything? No she wasn't, his mother was just as vulnerable as him, even more so and this incident only serves to highlight this. But there was hope yet, he could salvage his relationship with his mother and while the thought of going to therapy didn't appeal to him the thought of spending more time with his mother did. Izuku squeezed her hand and smiled nodding to the man. As the doctor left and Ko's smile dropped Izuku, where is Himiko? Oh now that I thought about it, she must have had some trouble getting in with all those reporters outside. Oh his mother seemed mollified by this as she leaned back into the bed I hope she's alright. Izuku smiled don't worry Kasen, Himiko can take care of herself. Where is he? Himiko had a scowl on her face as she tried and failed to spot her quarry. She had been on the hunt for a few minutes now and hadn't so much as caught a glimpse of him. Right now I should be with my Izukun and Inko. I swear when I get my hands on him her inner monologue cut once she spotted a suspicious looking person with a hood over his head. Himiko saw a flash of teeth before the man started walking away. Himiko pursued. Izuku might not have noticed what happened earlier given the crowd and the fact that he had his head down but Himiko saw everything. Someone had purposefully revealed him to the reporters, which wouldn't have warranted more than Himiko's disdain but it was when he spoke that she became agitated. Himiko knew this person, and if he's here, she trailed off with a bad feeling developing in the pit of her stomach. Himiko tracked him down to a wide darkened alley that wasn't a cliched dead end. She was still cautious though and the caution paid off as she managed to narrowly duck getting grappled from behind and sweep the perpetrator's leg from under him. She spun to her full height and attempted a stomp only for him to tilt his head to the side then push her using his foot to trip her up. Instead of stumbling Himiko did an elegant backflip to catch herself while reaching for her thigh holster. The man flipped up and spun into a roundhouse kick that caught her hand effectively kicking the weapon from her hand. Himiko growled as she had no choice but to engage him in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Immediately put on the defensive by his flurry of well-coordinated attacks Himiko was helpless when the man finished off with a spinning back kick that launched her into the wall. Coincidentally it happened to be beside where her errant weapon, a butterfly knife, lay. Himiko grinned maniacally as she held it up like a serial killer and charged after him. The man was silent but a mirrored grin could be seen under the hood even as he was forced on the defensive by Himiko's wild yet precise strikes. She jumped up and stabbed down towards his head. He used his wrist to block her own but Himiko simply let go of the scissors and caught it in her left hand before stabbing it. The man reacted with shocking speed grabbing her left hand and twisting it behind her painfully. Himiko's grin didn't waver as she tossed the weapon mid-twist and forced her body to do a corkscrew flip and twisting her arm while grabbing the weapon off the ground to stab it into the man's forearm. Surprisingly the blade didn't penetrate deep before it met resistance. He bled but not enough for Himiko's taste. TCH she clicked her tongue and leapt back standing at her full height are we done here? The stranger looked to his bleeding arm and licked the blood from it ignoring the way Himiko's face twitched at the action. Yes he finally lowered down his hood to reveal a pale-faced man with short shaggy black hair and bags under his yellow squinted eyes hello Haim Chan. I missed you the man ran at her open arms. Himiko stoically sidestepped his advance and folded her arms why are you here? The man looked at her hurt awe is that how you greet your brother after meeting again after so long? Shame on you Haim Chan. I don't want to hear that from someone who thinks attacking his sister is a proper greeting. She shouted back. Ah but I had to be sure he said. His tone becoming darker I wanted to know if the Haim Chan I saw today with that boy was my Haim Chan. Himiko stilled as her eyes gained an edge what are you saying? Oh nothing, it's just that I've never seen you smile like that in a long time. That boy must be really special if he's survived this long with you he gave her a coy look makes me want to meet him. Himiko's arms unfolded and she gave the man a murderous glare stay away from Izuku, he's mine. The man took a few steps back and held his hands up in surrender Skari but don't worry, little boys aren't my type he shrugged casually. Why are you here? 
I wanted to visit my Heim Chan at her glare he added and I also have some personal business to take care of. When I'm done we can hang out together and when you're done. He left the sentence open as he exited the alleyway leaving Himiko by herself. The girl stood there for a minute before she collapsed. Breathing heavily, her hand trembled and her expression looked stricken. Why him? Why did it have to be him? Unknown to her the man leaned against the wall and smiled a Cheshire smile that practically split his face. I'm back. Unfortunately this is not an update on the story itself but an update nonetheless. To those it may concern it's been a few years since I've posted on this site. Naturally there's a bunch of reasons why I've maintained silence. Mostly it's because of life and bit due to shame. I made the mistake of thinking of proclaiming that I'd be finishing all my stories at some point. If I could I'd travel back in time dope slap myself but if it wasn't obvious I won't be finishing a lot of my stories. I felt the need to address this because even years later some of you still feel the need to take jabs at me with snide comments about me not coming through on a promise I made years before when I was young, dumb and cocky. I'd say you guys are assholes but it's actually flattering because you enjoyed the stories and you want more so you show your displeasure at the fact that I'd essentially abandoned them. For what it's worth I am sorry about that and if I could I would totally devote my time and effort into finishing them. Unfortunately I lost interest in almost all my stories and have since moved on from them. Also my hard drive got wiped some time ago and since I didn't save them to cloud storage the only copies of said stories exist on this site alone. I didn't save them to a cloud server and tried to get them back with a few programs but most of them are lost. I'll make an update to the summaries of stories that are truly dead for you to see. So with that said I am planning on publishing fix on this site again. Different stories for different fandoms. Going in a different direction that would see me hopefully complete them this time damn stories this time. If you're interested in my writings I should have published a story by the time you read this so check that out if you're interested. For the Dark Light followers. By some grace of God I managed to save the last three chapters of Dark Light including the unpublished and incomplete ninth chapter. I'm going to be honest here. The MHA fandom kind of freaks me out. It's blown up a lot over the years to the point where I'm not even sure if my story could support all the shit currently going on. I mean between the movies, spin-offs, lore and the fact that IGN is individually reviewing episodes now MHA is a far cry from what I remembered as a good manga with a decent anime adaptation way back in 2017. I originally considered this story dead like all the others but a renewed interest in the story got me to read the manga again and now I'm caught up. Now I'm stuck between continuing the story or declaring it dead. There is also the possibility of a reboot. We're right but if I'm being honest I'd rather just polish this story since it still has potential in my eyes. I still get reviews for this story every month. I know more people continue to follow, favorite it so I know this story still has fans. Since it's been years I need to know if people are even still interested in this thing. If you're having trouble remembering why you have this in your feed give it a reread and tell me what you think. Show your support with a review or PM or whatever because I won't commit to this unless I know people are interested. The Fate of Dark Light well I said that I'd be looking to you guys to decide whether or not I should bother with this story again and after getting dozens of emails and a few PMs saying I should do it I went and did it. I reread the entire My Hero Academia manga and I found some very nice stories. In the end I finally felt truly inspired to sit down and this give story another shot. Keep in mind that this was last month so I had plenty of time to sit down and reread Dark Light before deciding between a continuation or a write. The answer I came up with was rewrite. As it is right now Dark Light is serviceable as a story and I can certainly continue it no problem but I think I could do better no I know I can do better. There are certain elements of the story that just don't work for me anymore, like Izuku being overpowered, Himiko's backstory and Silver Fang's place in the story. Then there are the missed opportunities with characters and moments but I won't get into that. With all that said, I have good news, bad news, better news and worse news but first an announcement. I have a pantry on page. Yep, I am monetizing which isn't as bad as you think because all my stories are going to be available to the public at some point. My page just allows you to view them first as well as the bulk of my content from the start. So if you're interested in more of my content because I intend to move all my stories there or you just want to support me then check it out. Still trying to figure this thing out. Your boy desperate and I ain't afraid to say it. Here's the link. Just remove the space add the slash www.patreon.com slash streggyworks. Now back to the rewrite. Good news, I already wrote the first chapter of the rewrite and am doing the second chapter even as I post this. I have a clear vision of what I want so I just have to. Bad news, I'm not planning on publishing the story until I built enough backlog of chapters to do weekly updates for several months after publishing. At the very best I want to be at where I left off with the original story and further develop the story. Better news, I am posting the written chapters on my Patreon as soon as I finish editing. 
Worse news. Until further notice the Dark Light rewrite will be a Patreon exclusive until further notice. That's all I have to say. If you're interested in reading it now check out my page. If not it's going to be a couple months wait but at least you know that by the time I do release this you're going to be getting consistent weekly updates barring any unforeseen circumstances. Also don't worry, I'm backing my content on Google Drive. Have a nice day, Striggy out.